There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We've got all of them here now. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Chud Watch. I hope you're all doing well on this Wednesday. We're not going to be doing eLive today. Um which is the D&D game we play on this channel. Um, Jake and Sarah are doing kitty stuff for their brand new kitty. So hopefully next week we'll get an episode of Alive. Um, we'll see. So let's see what I missed. Cosmic Cats. Thank you for subscribing for six months. As 
Hey Hannah, hope all is well. Haven't been able to watch live in a while because of a death in the family, but things are getting better now. Well, I'm glad things are getting better. I'm sorry for your loss. Mike Max says, in 20 years, I didn't notice this. And then there's a video. Oh yeah, the Mama Bear thing in Shrek. I saw this. Baby Bear. Baby Bear crying because the cage is too small, right? Now, anyways, Mama Bear got the pink bow. Remember that. Mama Bear got the pink bow. Remember that pink bow. Now, fast forward. We're going to get through all of this another time. But here. Boom, bam, bang. Now, we got two bears. Papa Bear and Baby Bear. But, no, Mama Bear. Where's Mama Bear? And they free, right? But Baby Bear is still crying. Papa Bear still looks sad. Why? Because Mama Bear ain't there. Where's Mama Bear? Fast forward. Fast forward. And. Bruh. 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 <laughs> Funny. Um, one speedy Yoshi says, over under, Dave says, the F slur. DM Trey says, just tested positive for COVID, so that's a thing. Wish me luck. Oh, no. Good luck. I, I hope you get uh, minor to no symptoms. So, what are we looking at today? We have uh, Ben Shapiro reacting to that Netflix show with the special effects makeup. I don't know what his reaction is going to be, but it just seemed like a funny thing to see how he reacts to that. Um, as in the title, Lord of Patriarchy, is going to read this article on a hundred easy ways to make the life of uh, trans people easier. And he's going to drunkenly try and make fun of it. So we'll take a look at that. Elliot Hulse with a video titled Women Belong at Home. Maybe some conservapedia, Bryson Gray. Went on this show, which we'll take a look at. Uh, Undead Chronic, the stoner zombie rant Sona, um, pseudo-responded to my video about him. I say pseudo-responded because he actually ignored my video and just decided to look at the comments. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, Lyra Me, thank you for subscribing with four months. Logarth says, oh damn, they didn't add the end I saw where in the big dancing at the end of the movie, Papa Bear has a new mama bear and she's got a different color bow that's polka dot and is a different character design, but obviously the new mama bear. <laughs> Speedy Yoshi says, oh God, please no Elliot Hulse. Too bad. And uh, we'll probably start with some right wing watch, right wing cope stuff. So yeah. Oh no, Lord Necro Jay-Z. Hi, Lord Necro Jay-Z. <laughs> Is that actually you? How are you doing? I was planning on watching... Uh, 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 uh... Oh, wait, no. Duh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I have zombie guy on the brain. I thought you were zombie guy for a second for some reason. Ugh, I don't know what's wrong with my brain today. Hold on, the cats are making noise. Let me see what they're doing. Be right back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Is my brain mushroom yesterday? I guess so. Sorry, by the way, anyone who missed yesterday's Tinfoil Tuesday had to delete that VOD for reasons. <laughs> um, one Speedy Yoshi says, I don't know what's wrong with my brain today. As John Doyle says, like every fucking video, your brain is melted by SSI and too much birth control. That's true. It's definitely my birth control pills. Tea with Goblin says, Elliot makes me want to drink whiskey and fling myself to the lesbians. Alas, we're still in lockdown, so I may have to settle for simply having birth control and opinions. I guess that'll do. Ben Shapi word. <laughs> That's pretty good. I don't think I'd heard that one. Not bad. All right. So I guess we're going to go ahead and start with some right-wing cope, right-wing watch stuff. 
Right Wing Watch has been pretty interesting lately. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the various MAGA grifters and their ilk have been up to, shall we? We're on Christmas. They did this, they targeted me, and they made an example out of me because I'm an outspoken Christian who vocally opposed... Wait, financial blacklisting. Wells Fargo shuts down GOP Senate candidate Lauren Witzke's bank account. This lady's awful. I know about this lady. I didn't know they shut down her bank account. <laughs> Morak says, I don't know about you, Hannah, but I appreciate random dongs in my Twitch streams. You know, I don't is the Equality Act. Listen, Alex, I don't know if you know much about it, but they're about to, they're trying to illegalize Jesus Christ and the, the scripture. Illegalize? Yes, I love my potential Senate candidates to know words like illegalize. <laughs> and no, that's against the First Amendment. That literally would be unconstitutional. Uh, someone posts, Bob the Exorcist meets John Saffron. Was hoping to get your opinion on who's grifting who. I don't know who John Saffron is. But, uh, I'll save it at some point. Um, we're on a hype train, by the way. 54% to level 1. Sure. And categorize Absolutely. It just like in Europe and Canada where they're arresting uh, pastors. Tell folks about it. <laughs> they're arresting pastors or anyone who is getting people together in large gatherings. It's not because of their religion. It's so disingenuous. When you have to lie about your position this much, how can you get up in the morning and live with yourself when you know you're lying constantly? Yeah, absolutely. So what it will do is it will classify scripture uh, belief in traditional marriage uh, as hate speech. If an abortionist chooses not to, wants to make the decision. An abortionist? That's the best superhero ever. Ba 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 ba! It's the abortionist! Flies to your house and gives a timely medical abortion. To not uh, perform an abortion, they can arrest that abortionist or that doctor or that nurse. That it's weird to get into being an abortionist if you're against abortion but okay bardlock moses says caught a stream this week sadly missed yesterday's stream well i'm sorry but thanks for the bits uh and john lee 3000 with 40 bits it chooses to um take the biblical approach and change their lives children who struggle with gender identity now that it's going to make them illegal for them to pursue therapy to change their mind uh conversion therapy yeah that's damaging Conversion therapy on children is abuse. I'd argue it is on adults too, but usually if an adult goes into conversion therapy, it's of their own free will and they consent to it. I think it's bad for them, but adults can do whatever they want. But forcing children into it, that's child abuse. Don't do that. Sky Comet Fallen with 100 bits says, God, her eyes are creeping me out. Way too much eye makeup. <laughs> hey, she's going for the sexy raccoon look, okay? And this is, I mean, it's absolutely an attack. It's basically on the cult Christians. trying to make it illegal to leave the cult. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and even just quoting scripture will be classified as hate speech. Um, <laughs> Again, does she know the Constitution? Doesn't even need to read the whole thing. Just go to the Bill of Rights, skip to that part, and then read the first, the First Amendment. That'll do it. Yay. Girthin says, my cat has learned how to gleek as a defense mechanism against our attempts to give him his medicine. I don't know whether to be annoyed or impressed. I don't know what that means. What's gleek mean? Um, Kippy with 50 bits says, it's the abortionist. They saved me from a horrible field death from my rotting fetus in my womb. Thanks, abortionists. Old enough to know more better, th or old enough to know better now. Thanks for gifting three su uh, tier one subs. And 0M80 with 100 says, oh no, they're banning child abuse. Alder Grin says, and that's the kind of a lie they can remove your license or fine you if you don't recommend another practitioner who would perform the abortion. They can't make you perform the abortion, but if you don't want to perform it, you still don't have to. Yeah, um, it wouldn't surprise me if certain hospitals might let someone go or something for that, but yeah. No, doctors don't really get to choose a ton but if they don't want to, at the very least, they need to be like, I'm not going to do it. But there's this other doctor who will. Uh, Zane Dill, thanks for 
12 months. Happy anniversary. Says, hey, Hannah, one year ago I discovered I was trans, and next month I have my first HRT appointment. Thank you for everything you do. Well, congratulations. I'm glad you're going to finally be able to get to do that. Andrew Batella says, well, reading stone your kids when they disobey should be illegal, to be fair. And then MH Dark Beast says, hey, Hannah, figured I would send you some bits. Uh, two of my favorite shitheads are meeting, and it would be ripe for multiple days of fun. Oh, no! This is a cursed image. This image, look at how cursed this image is. Look at how cursed this is. Jesus fucking Christ, I want to die. What is this? What is this hell you've sent me? Why, why are you doing this? <laughs> oh, no. Bumble Homestead. Um, thank you for gifting a sub. Uh, Kane Malice says, what subclass does abortionists belong to? Uh, I'm going to say paladin because it's healthcare. Kirthen says, gleeking is projectile spitting from your salivary glands. Gotcha. Uh, Sinister Owlet, thanks for gifting two subs. And I think that catches us up. Can we do that during our collab? Sure, sure, I'll save it. Sky Comet Fallen says, why would you become an abortion doctor if you don't want to perform abortions? What kind of logic do chuds use? I, I, I honestly don't know. They don't. Jesus Christ. Almighty Lord, save us. I didn't even know this happened. This was from like five months ago. This isn't even new. What the hell? <laughs> All right. Save that to the Chuds thing. Save it for the crossover. You'll leave this stream if you watch that curse stream. Now, show the first video. Bob, why only paid that much? Just because I'm smart. You know how to game the system. Well, guess what, Mr. I missed a bits message. Mr. President, I'm coming for you. Uh, Jamie Lynn Turner says, I'm glad I could catch your stream. I'm right now... I am right now while watching you working with my plastic surgeon to schedule my first uh, transgender operation. Oh, congratulations. Now, be sure the volume's in the stream well. I want everybody to hear this sound. Now go to the next video and show this one. Now watch this close and listen very closely. 120 days. Give me a break. Need time. The next one. Hydrate. I got them. $1.9 trillion. <laughs> In fairness, I do think Joe Biden should probably stop whispering. He sounds creepy. Hydrate. Leave so far. They're going to be getting checks in the mail. Ooh, legal document from Trump's Facebook lawsuit. <laughs> That's probably a shit show. That are consequential this week for child care. So she mind him. I wrote the bill. On the environment. Why would I not be for it? Pay them more. This is an employee's, employee's bargaining chip now. Now, anyone in deliverance ministry, anyone that's ever dealt in deliverance in the ministry, where they deal with demonic spirits and evil spirits, will know that sound. Anyone that's ever been in deliverance should know that sound. So if I do the stream like this, and I just whisper into the microphone that I'm a demon. This is, I've been possessed by a demon. Someone get Bob Larson. Oh no. Am I giving you tinglies? ASMR. <laughs> Logard says, damn it, Repub saying the quiet part out loud and Dem say the loud part quiet. Come on, guys. <laughs> they know exactly what they're hearing. While the press says it's whispers, anyone that's ever been in deliverance ministry knows what that is. It's the voice of a demonic spirit. A demonic spirit that's telling employers to pay their staff better. Damn you, Satan! Pyromancer says, uh, don't give the audience what they aren't paying for, Hannah. And Morak says, mini cleanse? <laughs> uh, 
That was a brief cleanse. I'll take it. They were just like, they're like, take this. There's folks, Bill folks, Mitchell. I had, folks, I had 600,000 followers on Twitter. My Twitter feed during the election cycle was getting 300 million hits a month. I received 90 million hunts, hits on election night. Twitter shut my account down. They deleted all my followers. It took me years to gain 600,000 followers. Delete all my followers. Why? Because I tweeted that when you breathe out through a mask, you are rebreathing your own CO2 and it's unhealthy. <laughs> That's untrue. That's medical misinformation. Von Tuck says, literally paying your employees more is demonic. Tea with Goblin says, choo-choo. Thank you. We got uh, level three on the hype train. You can find that in that in 50 different medical Uh, no. Yesterday's stream is just nuked. It's gone forever. <laughs> I apologize. Girls, that is a medical fact. And Twitter said, it's not. That's a lie. You're lying. That's medical misinformation. I was spreading medical information. I was medical misinformation I was lying to people i was putting people's lives at risk and lying to people and it's like it's not a lie it's not a lie it, it is i'm not even necessarily saying you are lying because a lie kind of requires knowledge that you're spreading misinformation but you're certainly spreading misinformation whether you know it or not whether it's just because you're stupid and irresponsible or because there's intentional malice involved either way it's a mistruth so either you're dangerous for being an idiot or you're dangerous for being a liar. Either way, you're a liability to Twitter. Zero M80, thanks for gifting subs to the community. Twitter is not the decider of truth on the planet. A bunch of mealy mouth, uh, uh, triggered liberals sitting in Silicon Valley are not the deciders of truth for America. And <laughs> the decider of whether or not you get a Twitter account. They canceled my account. The Washington Times had an entire, I mean, one page article written about it. It was a big deal. It was a big deal when it happened. And I was the canary in the coal mine when it happened because I was the one of the first major political pundits that was taken off of social media. Is Bill Mitchell considered a major political pundit? Makes me feel better about myself. Sky Comet Fallen says, I lost my Twitter account because I broke TOS. Where? And Logarth says, sounds like this guy doesn't believe in the mysterious hand of the market. <laughs> For really nothing. And they wanted to get rid of me. You know, MIT had ranked me the uh, 26th most influential person in politics in 2016. And they did not want that happening again in 2020. So they were looking for any reason. As a matter of fact, the tweet that they uh, banned me for was a month old when they shut me down for it. It had already been out there a month. Okay. They were just like, they're like, take this guy out, find anything, find something from his background. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Well, he's salty. It's a little hard to understand. Luke, I believe it is, when it says, I beheld, Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Remember that? You've mm -hmm. read that? Oh, yeah. Well, in Hebrew, it says something like this. If you read it in Hebrew, it says something like this. I beheld uh, Satan uh, fall from the heights or actually, it says, I beheld Satan as Barack Obama. <laughs> he, mystery solved, gang. We did it. We got him. We got him. Nick says, so many clouds for that old guy to yell at. I know. What? It says it. It says, I beheld him as Bar Barack uh, Balmall or something like that. Barack Obama isn't even the president anymore, guys. Why are they fucking obsessed? It's so weird. John Lee says, can't stick around today, but please watch this Marcel video I found if you haven't because I'm obsessed. Let me see what it is. Well, we need <laughs> Maybe. Um, Von Tuck says, Hick Preacher reads Bible in Hebrew, presses that X button. <laughs> in other words, it refers to that name, Barack Obama. And he says, he didn't say he was Satan. He said, I beheld him as him. And so he walks out on the throne of Satan, declares everything he declares, signs into law, Baal worship, just like that. Guys, remember when Obama... 
had that landmark Baal worship bill on his desk, and he signed it, and he was like, yep, everyone has to worship Baal now. That was weird. Um, it got overshadowed by uh, Obamacare, but the Baal religious bill, you know, eh, it's worked out. Yeah. I thought he said Balrog. <laughs> Morak says, as someone who has taken Hebrew in relation to the Bible, that's not what it says. Really, I'm shocked. I really believe this guy that Barack Obama is name dropped in the Hebrew, <laughs> original Hebrew of the Old Testament. It's bail out. God, people have laughed at you. They've laughed at your prophets. They, they laughed at you because you prophesied that Trump would win a second term, and you were wrong. And you keep tripling, quadrupling, octupling down on it. They've laughed at your church. They've laughed at your intercessors. They've laughed at the patriots. They've laughed for those that voted for 45. Now I pray that their laughter would be turned into silence. As you laugh, it's your turn now, God, to laugh out of the heavens and to show the earth that you're a just God. Yikes. Logarth says, I mean, child sacrifices just serve to help more on medical costs, save more on medical costs. So let's be honest, it was a win-win for everyone. <laughs> and Nick says, unironically, yes, we are laughing at you. I know. It's too easy. Watch in USA Today. Do you think that, you know, the more that these right wing watch in USA Today and Howard Stern now and all these other people, their masters are telling them to come. Wait, Howard Stern is our master? I've literally never watched a Howard or listened to a Howard Stern show. I'm aware of his existence, but I've never watched Howard Stern. Master. Isn't he just a shock jock? <laughs> like what? the Stu Peters show to come after Deanna Lorraine or Dr. Jane Ruby, uh, you know, as this Dan Funky guy did. Do you think that this is because their masters, the people that owned them, the people that they sold their souls, souls to, do you think that these people, the, the handle, the puppeteers at the top of it, do you think that they're scared because we're just hovering right over the target, dangerously close? Yeah, we're going right over the target and they know. Do you think that, you know, the more that- I find that funny too. You have seen this a lot in the QAnon community lately where they're like, all the leftists, all the liberals, because they conflate the two, um, they're so afraid because we're so close to reaching the truth. I, I don't know where they're getting this idea that people on the left are, like, worried about any of their conspiracy theories. I literally make my living partially making fun of them. Like, it's nobody on the left is actually concerned about any of their weird conspiracy theories. I guess it makes them feel better to imagine that there are people who are worried about it, but... I don't know. Nick says, Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Trump lost the election. Von Tuck says, After 9-11, I didn't think mixing Christianity with American patriotism fetishization could get any higher. Oh, how wrong and innocent I was. And Bardlock Moses says, Howard Stern is Joe Rogan with talent. Good to know. Oh, Greg Locke. What a week this has been. Whew. Man, it's not every week you trend on Twitter with Tom Hanks. <laughs> They're like, you do realize, Pastor Locke, that Tom Hanks and Joe Biden and Oprah Winfrey are going to sue you. I don't think Biden would, but Tom Hanks and his agents probably could. For those who don't know, Greg Locke was making accusations that Tom Hanks is a pedophile and has assaulted children. Completely unsubstantiated claims, obviously. Uh, so, yeah, you... <laughs> He could sue you. I don't know if he'd win. Um, uh, libel and slander laws are pretty loose in the United States. It's pretty hard to prove. Um, with a public figure, you have to prove like actual malice, among other things. It's kind of a big pain in the ass. But anyway, uh, he could at least try and sue you. Wouldn't be great. No, they won't. 
Pyromancer says, friendly reminder that it's been 81 days and Frank's speech still doesn't function as advertised. Tea with Goblin says, question for Hannah and other Americans in stream. What proportion of your country would you say actually agrees with these idiots? Are you guys okay? Uh, let me take the last one first. No, we're not okay. Uh, and I think a poll I saw said between 15 and 20% of Americans believe in at least some aspect of QAnon. So, more than I'm comfortable with, I'll put it that way. Uh, Adia Blue, thanks for subscribing with a four-month streak. No, they won't. You know what happens when people sue you? You get a discovery process. You can subpoena witnesses. You can subpoena books. You can subpoena videos. and You can subpoena articles. And In order to subpoena something, though, you have to kind of know it exists. So are you just going to send a request to <laughs> Tom Hanks' team that says, We subpoena all evidence of you R-wording children. Like, that's not how that works. <laughs> Uh, Morak says that 15 to 20 percent is why I'm trying to move to New Zealand. Wish me luck at getting out of this hellhole. Good luck. Sky Comet Fallen says I prefer Bales above anyway. It's on my bucket list to ask Bob to exercise Beals above from me. Two of them that I name can't see me. They're probably sitting in Gitmo prison right now anyhow with an ankle bracelet on. Praise God. What a oh the delusion. Yeah, they think a lot of people are already in Gitmo. They're not, at least not the people they think that are in there. <laughs> hey, Cassie. Yeah, he he could get a cease and desist or something. Who knows, though? And it was replica. They built this throne, and it was replica after the throne of Satan in Berlin, <laughs> the Pergamon right. throne. See, there it is. See it? Really? See it, the columns? See all yeah. of that? Oh, look man. look at the stars and stripes hanging there and say what am i supposed to be seeing satan's throne is above the stars look at it so right. there he sits there now watch this there's this there's the real throne of pergamon tell me they don't look alike oh, and man. then if you superimpose one over the other there it is so barack obama oh man when he walked why are they still talking about obama He's not the president. <laughs> Who is Bill Gates' spiritual advisor, starts the meetings off, starts off meetings. She invites Satan into the hearts of her students. And her students include Lady Gaga. She's really into cannibalism. So again, the person advising Bill Gates is a satanic Satan worshiper. That's what she does. Everything I don't like is Satanism. A Colston says just got done arguing with a liberal who doesn't like critical race theory. And he said that even down, he thinks that even down, I assume even though he thinks that systematic discrimination exists, he thinks that all poor people are hurt the same despite evidence to the contrary. This guy is trying to get a PhD in psychology, by the way. He's in for a rude awakening if he tries to pull this shit on sociologists who actually study this shit. Morak says they keep talking about him because he's brown and that scares them. Von Tuck says, if I had a time machine, I would go to a showing of Castaway and lean over to the person next to me and say, in 2021, millions of weirdos will believe this guy is a pedophile. And Bitter Grin says they just never got over a black man winning the presidency, did they? No, they didn't. And Bill Gates chose to team up with Jeffrey Epstein to do a project together. And you say, what was the project? The world's most prolific pedophile teamed up with Bill Gates to work on a project. And you say, what's that project? Just type in Jeffrey Epstein creates own race of people. Into Google. What? Google. So Jeffrey Epstein was trying to create his own race of people. Some might call it the Lucifer race. He wanted to seed the human race with his DNA. So models are false. PCR tests are false. Treatments are real. What's the motive? It's to get you and I to take the shot, a.k.a. the mark, with the patent number W02020060606. The technology was cooked up by a spirit cooker who prays to Satan and the world's most prolific pedophile, teaming up with Bill Gates, who right now stands at the threshold of the gates of hell. Marina, Bar It feels like it's Tinfoil Tuesday all over again. Holy hell. That's a lot of bullshit. Going into this, that I would be scrutinized, that I'd be called a racist, that I'd be fact-checked. 
How dare you check my facts? Labeled a conspiracy theorist. And that the slaves to Satan would no doubt come right after me. I don't let that bother me. I don't care. I don't understand how adult people believe in Satan. It would be like, for me, I guess, and I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm really not. I'm not trying to be edgy. I'm just trying to explain my point of view. Your religious beliefs are your business. That's fine. I don't care. I just genuinely don't understand people who believe in Satan as a literal, real thing. It would be like running into an adult who believes in Santa. It's just so bizarre. Nick says, is this guy one man tinfoil Tuesday bingo card? I think the bingo card came to life and started a show. About threats of violence. I don't care about censorship. I don't care about big money contracts. I don't care about bribery. <laughs> Lily Love Stuff says, okay, but Epstein did want to make his own like breeding program for people. It was basically eugenics. Gross. Lawsuits and blatant coercion have been ineffective and I come into this studio every single day with my shoulders rolled back, with my head held high and ready to take it all on. My kid's future is worth it. The future of your family and the future of this constitutional republic is hanging in the balance and she is worth fighting for. It is no surprise to me that the devil is pissed off about all of it. And it's proven by the washed up, foul mouthed, slimy existence of the personification of evil mentioning this program and doing it in such a fact based delivery filled with substantiated. Fact based. <laughs> Did he just use fact based as a derogatory term? Evidence, right? This is the face of the globalists. <laughs> okay. This is one of the mutated humans, if you can so call him that, that the deep state purveyors of evil will prop up as a spokesperson for- Is Howard Stern even relevant in 2021? Von Tuck says, Tinfoil Tuesday and Chud Watch do get harder to tell apart every week. I know. The acceptance of genocide. If you follow Howard Stern, I will pray for you. <laughs> I think he's just salty that Howard Stern, I guess, covered him. I don't know. Tonight, six. Let's see. Prophet Jeff Jansen declared that the military would remove Biden from office and reinstall Trump by the end of April. When that didn't happen, he moved the date to the end of June. It's now June 30th, so we better get moving. Hey guys, Jeff Jansen, Global Fire Ministries International. Tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, President Trump, yes, they're calling him President Trump, is going to be addressing the GOP. Uh, and the nation. I'm not sure if it's televised. Probably not. It'll be a, a live stream for sure. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be talking about the uh, the five states from uh, Georgia, you know, Michigan, Arizona, Wisconsin, and gosh, you know, Pennsylvania. But uh, we'll watch what happens. Uh, I said by spring, which starts officially June the 23rd, uh, we'd be dancing in the streets. The Trump administration is on its way in. The the pedophilia Biden administration, the fake administration, Biden's administration's on its way out. I don't care if you like it or not, it doesn't matter. We all know what took place and uh, God is going to do something amazing in this nation and through this nation. Uh, it uh, uh, Thrash Mio says, Santa, Satna, Satan, X-Files music. Mike Mack says, isn't, isn't Satan in prison? So how is he the final villain? I I don't know. You'd have to ask a pastor about that. Nick says, this guy be like, facts. And then it's got that anti-Semitic triple echo thing going on. Morak says, as a Satanist, I believe in Satan as a concept, not as a real being. Satan is freedom from societal expectations, norms, and especially religious paranoia. Satan is femininity in the face of patriarchy. Satan is respect for one another's beliefs, if that makes sense. Sure, if you're using it as a symbol, I don't care. <laughs> down my pillow. What this is trying to show, it's trying to shut up the business community and a businessman to say, hey, if, 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 if you raise your voice, if you try to have any opinion at all, we're going to come and sue you. And most business people are going to sit there and calculate, hey, you know what? The legal is going to cost me this. I'm going to lose customers. I'm going to do it. i got to focus on the business. They're just going to shut up. This is, this, is, this is to get people to shut up and just go along. This is how, hey, look back in the 1930s. Don't take it from Steve Bannon. Read the history of, of the 1920s and 1930s. I'm going to pick a random case in Nazi Germany. Just <laughs> the irony of Steve Bannon trying to defend Mike Lindell by appealing to fascism 
and portraying their enemies as fascists breaks the concept of irony. Irony is cancelled. Princess Amelia says, Always been weird to me. God is all-powerful and good. Satan is not all-powerful, so God allows Satan to do stuff because... Because reasons. I don't know. Clear today. Jesus Christ shut down Right Wing Watch. Amen. <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ sucks then because Right Wing Watch got put back up within 24 hours of their banning. Amen. Not this uh, Twitter or Twitter page, Right Wing Watch, um, also uh, has a YouTube channel and it got banned for like 24 hours because it, it has, of course, all this conspiracy bullshit. So YouTube mistakenly took it down and then was like, oh, sorry, yeah, you're just kind of cataloging this stuff. You're not promoting it. Um, and it got put back up. But briefly, people like this were super happy because they thought Right Wing Watch was uh, banned for good. It wasn't. Gameplay Nation, thank you for gifting 10 subs to the community. I appreciate that. Thank you. And Von Tuck says, God allows Satan to exist, watches him do evil. Sounds like God has a fetish. Who doesn't? Not YouTube. Not YouTube. Jesus Christ shut down Right Wing Watch today. This is an example of God working through unsaved people at YouTube to carry out his vengeance against those who attack and smear his servants. And so I didn't have to lift a finger against Right Wing Watch. I think they'll disappear in the coming weeks and months. There's no purpose for them now. Let me make this very clear today. She <laughs> Oops, didn't mean to click on that. Um... Mike Max says, if people are afraid of Satan, just ask Michael to kick his ass again. Did I watch the spontaneous national anthem in a Walmart? No, I don't even know what you're talking about. In compliance, I am in utter defiance of this. Listen. This is after, uh, this is Greg Locke after he got asked to wear a mask and a I'll Dunkin' go Donuts. go to jail over this situation. It is the golden calf. I'm sick of Christians saying things like this. Well, it's just a mask. You know what they used to say? Oh, it's just a baby. It's just a zygote. It what? Dude, what? <laughs> Why are you comparing wearing a mask to abortion? Just wear the mask, you dick. It's just a growth in the mother's womb, so let's kill it. No, it's not just a mask. It's a compliance device. This is not about safety. This is about surrendering of our rights. Can I remind you, this is still the United States of America. This is not communism. Communism is when there are public health safety measures. OSHA is communism. This is not China. This ain't North Korea. I don't live in Haiti. I don't live some other country somewhere where I'm under the guise of communism. And so, Does he think Haiti is communistic? Von Tuck says the North Korean Walmart mentioned. Oh, God. This is the United States of America. Y'all hear me? Trump 2020. Who? Who? <laughs> okay, what's this? Customers suddenly sing the national anthem at Texas Walmart? Why? You're at Walmart. Get your shit and leave, you weirdos. Andrew Patella says, Communism is when capitalism treats me poorly. So fucked. Yeah, I did hear Hades president got assassinated. Three comments in and out of public meetings and the general divide. Oh, that's gross. That just creeps me the hell out. I don't like that. are so weird is true across the board i've been banned from you know youtube twitter facebook has banned me put me in jail many many times i'm sure you and your program being as bold as it is you've experienced the exact same thing and so people that say that this is not an attack have lost their mind this is an absolute attack on our first amendment right and i tell people all the time look when it comes to our church 
and what we need to say and remaining open that uh, when they impede upon our First Amendment right, we'll meet them at the door of the tent with our Second Amendment right. Because, look, they are trying to silence us. And I think our compromise is our silence. The fact that we are not willing to push back. Jesus Christ, Craig. Pyromancer says, if I lived in Texas, I'd cringe myself out of the state. <laughs> Stromboli for Wi-Fi says, just got home from Mexico City. May I just say... They got their shit on point. Most places nicer than 7-Elevens have temperature monitoring, mandatory sanitiz sanitizer stations. First world country citizens are so spoiled to the slightest inconvenience. Nick says, and they were all named Albert Einstein. And Andrew Batella says, here's an idea. We pay a bunch of people to start singing the American anthem in Walmart and let other people join. Then they switch to singing Canada's anthem and then the international. <laughs> Speaking of right-wing bullshit, oh, Jesus Christ, yeah, I can see that. I don't even want to go over that right now. <laughs> Gross. Okay, let's see what's going on on right-wing cope, see if there's anything good. Oh, yeah, this Tucker Carlson Over classroom take was so stupid. The majority of Americans, and pollsters have found this pretty clearly, think this is insane. They think you should judge people by what they do, not on the basis of their skin color. They Stromboli for Wi-Fi, thank you for subscribing for eight months, says, uh, almost our stream, baby. Hannah, are you looking for a boy, girl, or futa? Oh, God. As long as it's healthy. Believe in Martin Luther King. So it is BS. In fact, it's more than that. It's civilization ending poison, but it's everywhere. How widespread is it? Well, we can't really be sure until we finally get cameras in the classroom as we put them on the chests of police officers, until we finally get a civilian review board in every town in America to oversee the people teaching your children, forming their minds. And let's hope we get both of those very soon. But until we do, we can't know exactly how widespread this is, but there are indications. We know that these ideas, this poison, has made it all the way to expensive private schools in central Ohio. Jesus Christ, Tucker. Every time I think Tucker can't get fucking worse. <laughs> Florida people with a fuck Joe Biden sign. Yeah, that's why Chuds are talking about classroom cameras. Biden. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Guys, Trump is still in power. Biden is the shadow president. Take that. The military is protecting us. He's coming back July 4th. Hold tight, Patriots. This Sunday, he's back. USA, USA, MAGA. Hashtag stop the steal. Hashtag MAGA. What's today's date? The seventh, you say? Huh. Oh yeah, Nick Fuentes posted. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July to the gay country that stole my money and put me on a no-fly list and banned me from processing credit cards for my businesses and banned me from using social media. <laughs> Hey, Nick, if you don't like it, you can leave. Nick says, who's the president? Let's check. It does appear Joe Biden is the president of the United States currently. Thanks for having me check. I wasn't sure. Stromboli for Wi-Fi says, I'm sort of proud that I got you onto full Tucker Carlson clips with the Thanksgiving Day Parade video. Yeah, he says this on Twitter, too. Like, what do you mean? You're banned from all social media? You tweeted this. Oh, this one I don't get at all. Climate change is bad is the mask, and then under it is I hate white people. I'm not sure how recognizing the existential th threat of climate change is. Anti-white? I don't, I don't get it. 
Sky Comet Fallen says, does he think gay is an insult? It isn't 2003, Nick. Gay isn't an insult. Um, Andrew Patella says, calls the USA gay when he gets on the no-fly list. Has a cat boy boyfriend. Hmm, looks sus. Winchanter says, Mike Lindell finally gave a solid date. Do you think it will alter Peter's outlook when it doesn't come true? No. No, it won't. No, just people who use pronouns don't matter and lost all rights. This person doesn't use pronouns apparently of any sort. If you haven't caught on yet, we're just going to give Larson first on Saturday because he'll probably win anyway. What the heck is he talking about? Oh, it's just showing <laughs> them using pronouns. She, she, etc. <laughs> oh, the racist is into NASCAR too. I kind of wish that wasn't shocking. I don't know how to be less white, but I do know how to drink less Coke. How about you? Oh, the boomer memes. Goddamn boomer memes. Um, every... Oh, this is from the conservative subreddit. Every racist confederate statue... I like that racist is in quotes, too. Every racist confederate statue the House voted to remove from Congress is of a Democrat... Yeah, the Democrats used to be pieces of shit back in the day. They were the party that defended slavery. And then over time, the parties changed completely, which is why you can see a complete flip on the map of voting where the South used to always primarily vote for Democrats. And then around the time of the Civil Rights Movement and the Civil Rights Act, it switched. And then all of a sudden, Republicans became a party that was popular in the South and Democrats became a party that was popular in higher populated areas, places in the North, etc., etc. It's a reason that if you talk to a KKK member today, they're going to more likely agree with Republicans. <laughs> and why Republicans voted against removing these statues and Democrats voted to remove them. Winchanter says, why didn't we collectively agree as a generation to not teach the boomers how to use computers? Yeah, that would have been the good call, I think. What the fuck? In democratic America, if this girl sees a penis at a party, it's a crime. But if this girl sees a penis in the women's bathroom, it's tolerance. What is this obsession? With seeing penises in bathrooms. I've used bathrooms all my life. Do you know how many penises I've seen in bathrooms in, in the men's room that I've used for most of my life? Zero. Who is looking at each other's dicks? You're there to pee or poop. Jesus Christ. And yeah, if you expose yourself at a party without consent, yeah, that's a crime, dipshit. Don't... Don like, Jr.? Uh, I don't think Joe's smart enough to be like, Hey, let's send them off the trail. Uh, don't hack the McDonald's on DC. I mean, why doesn't he just give Putin, like, I don't know, the keys to the nuclear football? Let's, what's the list? Don't hack one, Joe's basement. Two, Hunter's businesses. Three, Hunter's laptop. 10% for the big guy. Four, don't hack that. Uh, what's going on? Oh, God. Don Jr.'s. <laughs> on something in my opinion mike mack says so a republican person wants a confederate democrat statue removed or not that's what i'm saying it doesn't make sense if they really felt that democrats of the civil war era are the same as democrats today they would want to remove those statues like modern day democrats do i don't i don't get it oh yeah did you see this 
person's collection of Trump memorabilia. First of all, that Trump doll is creepy. That's a creepy, fleshy Trump doll, and I don't like it. Oh, that one's bad, too. All of these are bad. Donald Trump is not a, a person I want to look at <laughs> in general. But every depiction of him is terrible. The mask that's sort of in the bottom center here looks like someone literally skinned Donald Trump's face. I don't like it. Look at Trump real doll. <laughs> oh, God. How many copies of, of... Oh, no. That's the Trump board game. Okay. All right. The best looking person ever. You know, the, the sex doll jokes were jokes, but now I'm actually thinking that they probably do fuck some of those dolls. Firemancer says, this person couldn't go the whole nine yards and make each icon on their computer a tiny Trump face. I know. How lazy. Abortion is a murderous choice. Vote Republican. Atheists, abortionists, homosexuals, and other pervert perverts will love your Democrat vote. Same-sex marriage, okay. Killing babies, okay. Transgender nonsense, okay. Democrat party, party of immorality. <laughs> Beautiful. Are we sure this isn't a horror movie set? <laughs> and Midnight says, Don Jr., your dad already gave Russia the keys to the kingdom. Oh, look, another Ben Garrison. <laughs> oh, boy. They better hurry up with those audits. We're already, uh, uh, uh we're, we're getting towards a year into the Joe Biden presidency by the time they're going to be done. I don't think that, I think they're still not done with the stupid Arizona one. Andrew Batella says, those signs are unironically good PR for the Dems. And Stromboli for Wi-Fi says, all my bits to read this deadpan, please. I'll try. <clears throat> Losing himself in his work was the only thing that helped the pain. It's been over a year since Karen passed away, but the memories couldn't be more fresh for Tom. He spent his days going through the motions while reliving the short time he had with her, like the time they rode a tandem bicycle through the park, or when they made love on the beach while the surf washed over their naked bodies. If only he could live in that memory forever. But inevitably, the memory of her death would obliterate the refuge in his mind. She was laying there in that cold hospital bed, looking into his eyes. She gripped his hand and said, Tom, I love you. Please move on and be happy. He tearfully looked into her eyes and said, Her de Fleur, de Bork, den Smokar, skit Paul, Joel Bord, Bort, de Bort Bort. You're welcome. <laughs> John Fallon or Fallon, I don't know. I, I don't know why I keep forgetting. Thank you for subscribing for 10 months. <laughs> FAA goes woke. Um, airman, current term airman, proposed term pilot operator. Have they even called pilots airmen since, like, the 1960s or 70s? I've only ever heard the term pilot. <laughs> and cockpit to flight deck. I've heard flight deck. I've heard those pretty interchangeably. <sighs> Did I see the amazing $100 uh, White Ranger figure? Wow. That's cool. I don't normally, I like prop replicas more than I like figures. Like, I want to get one of those really good Saba sword replicas, but figures don't really do it for me generally. I don't care what liberal says. I'm not dating a girl with pronouns. <laughs> I don't think that'll be a problem. Andrew Patella says, "In the word is the word pit too spicy to be a part of cockpit? <laughs> Here is all I want. Obama, gone. Okay, he got two terms as president. He's gone, so I guess he got that one. Borders, closed. 
I mean, do you mean entirely? You don't even want legal immigration? Because I don't think you're going to get that. Language. English. Um, the United States doesn't have an official language, but it's the majority language. Culture. U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights. Those are legal foundations. I, I don't know what you mean by culture, but okay. Drug-free, mandatory drug screening before welfare. All right, as long as corporations, their board of directors and CEOs have to get drug tested before any sort of bailout or tax breaks. That'd be great. Um, no freebies to non-citizens. Also, balanced budget. Oh, good news. Uh, Democrats have um, lower deficits than Republicans. So, probably vote for Democrats then. Uh, tax reform. Again, probably Democrats. Rich people should pay more taxes. Uh, term limits for Congress and Senators. Republicans aren't really pushing for that. And uh, only 86 will send this on. Should be 100%. I hate when posts are like that. I hate Facebook memes. Alrighty, I think that's probably enough right-wing cope and stuff for the day. We can move on to the actual longer videos and see what Lord of Patriarchy and whatnot are up to. Do we want to watch Lord of Patriarchy first, or do we want to watch Ben Shapiro? What do you guys think? Ben, Ben, Ben. Ben wins. So this I thought would be fun. I I'm not particularly interested usually in Ben Shapiro's political opinions because they're the typical uh, neocon, like, bullshit. I don't really care for it. I don't find it entertaining to comment on most of the time. Um, but I do like Ben Shapiro as a subject to look at and study what kind of person he is because boy is ben shapiro a weird guy so today he's going to be reacting to the trailer to netflix's new show what the heck is it called um sexy beasts this is a terrible looking show that netflix is making where they set up people on blind dates and put them in <laughs> kind of horrifying special effects makeup so <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna react to Ben Shapiro reacting to this. Should be good. Morak says Lord of Gloop and uh, Colston says is this his demisexual vid? No, it's not. I almost picked that one, but I picked this one instead. I have been made aware of a trailer on Netflix for a new dating show that basically, I think, spells the end of our society as we know it. Okay. The hyperbole is already into high gear. Here we go. The asteroid is coming. Oh, God, I hope so. And if there's any justice under God, we will all be gone soon. <laughs> this is the only time I've ever agreed with Ben Shapiro. Nick says, is this what they call conservative humor? <laughs> no, Steven Crowder has to be in frame for it to be conservative humor. That, that's what I, I think that's what I'm going to take away from this. I want to get married. I want to have babies. Before I'm like 26, do you have health insurance? Welcome to the strangest blind date ever. Hey, how you doing? How Damn. Are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Could you fall in love with someone based on personality alone? What is your ideal woman? Uh, oh, that was a terrible bowling. Like, what do you, I don't know what it's called. It's not a pitch, a roll. That was a terrible roll. Oh, yeah, the John Doyle video from Slightly Offensive. I forgot about that. Personality for me is everything. Ass first, personality second. Okay, can we pause it there for a second? Um, so, okay. Um, what? Why? <laughs> Yay. Who? But, no. Interspecies dating, apparently, is, is now a thing. They're so focused on this, and, and the other person we watched, I don't even remember who we watched react to this, but they had a similar reaction where they're like, interspecies dating. Ben, that's not, that's not the point. The point is that it's, it was a call for an uprising? It was, thank you. It's not supposed to be like, 
oh yeah look at this beaver fuck this praying man mantis or whatever it, it, it's just a way of disguising their face they could have easily just been wearing ski masks but that's not fun now i'd argue this also probably isn't fun but it's at least trying to do something as a gimmick right they're in special effects makeup or whatever you're not supposed to look at them and be like oh yeah i want to fuck that beaver you're supposed to look at them and be like oh ha huh, silly silly special effects makeup Logarth says, as a furry, I find myself agreeing with Ben Shapiro more than I am physically comfortable with on this subject. And Red Werewolf says, Ben Shapiro, destroyed by the concept of furries. Also, I, I like when they say no matter what they look like, but you may have noticed that when people tend to evaluate possible romantic interests, they don't just look at their head. Their bodies are also part of this. So if you actually wanted to do. Um, actually, Netflix, did you know that when people find people that they want to uh, uh, go on dates with, that they look at their body? Did you... Uh, consider that Netflix checkmate liberal elite full on blind dating. What you would actually do is you'd go back to like one of those 1970s show where people were behind a curtain or alternatively, you could just have them wear giant fat suits and then we would see how all of this went. But as it turns out, the fat suit idea is not bad, actually. Like if you go back a little bit in the trailer, there are some people who are flaunting some natural body parts that um, are, shall we say, not made up they're real oh. and they're spectacular right i mean like i feel like you get a fairly good idea that this person is not 300 pounds for example so it's not like a full-on blind date also i think that if we are just evaluating whether you should date someone based on personality the mere fact that they have now appeared on this show means you should not do that that is like the <laughs> It's actually a good joke from Ben. Uh, Mr. Maximum Austin says, was the Final Fantasy music on edit on Hannah's part or did Ben or, the, ben or the Wire put it in? If it's the latter, that feels wrong in a way. I didn't add it. Old Enough to Know Better Now says, didn't Netflix also do Love is Blind? I, I don't know. I don't watch dating shows often. The worst idea. I think about the only dating show I've ever watched consistently is 90 Day Fiance. Logarth says, you mean it's all furries? Crouch to pounce and scritch always has been in the land the only thing that you know about this person is that they were willing to get themselves gussied up in a bizarre halloween costume i think ben shapiro is the only person under 60 to use the term gussied up in decades to go on an attention-seeking dating show on netflix that right there means not marriage material and anybody who's on the show and thinks otherwise is delusional this is just hideously <laughs> stupid in every respect yeah, that's the, that's the premise. Other notes before we go further. The attempt to completely divorce biological attraction from dating is a very strange one, given the fact that the left also suggests that satisfaction of the sexual urge is the height. Ben, it's a TV show. It's not a model for ideal human dating interaction. It's a gimmick, you weirdo. Of human existence. That identity is... Uh, Nickadoo, thanks for following. ...innately tied to your biological and unchanging immutable sexual drives. But it's better if we remove that by dressing people up like dolphins. Does Ben think that the show is supposed to be like, this is how dating should be? It's, it's, Ben, it's a, it's, it's a gimmick for their dating show. It's not supposed to be something you do in real life. What are you doing? Look, Ike, your daddy's a dolphin. Yep. You're the best looking devil I've ever seen. This is really weird Oh right my now. god. This, this, is, this is really weird right now. This has a weird experience for you. Okay, so are furries upset about this show? Um, from what I've seen, furries just think it's creepy like everyone else. Or are they really happy about this show? There's a whole weird subgroup of people who are attracted to people in furry costumes. And I don't know whether this is like their ideal or whether they're like, you're appropriating my culture, man. My pet is not your dating show. Yikes. Nick says, can we do vegan teacher so I can cook my chicken? No, no vegan teacher today. <laughs> my pet's culture. Oh, you're not going to fucking believe this. So I was, I've, I've been putting up videos. So, so like some of my stuff on YouTube went up today. Vegan teacher copyrighted one of the videos for one of her songs. <laughs> so she tried to take, um my ad revenue from a video that I did of her because one of her songs was in it. I just removed the song. <laughs> but I thought that was funny. It's not your dating show, guys. I'll be honest. I am curious as to whether the particular characters that are being put on these 
people in the dating profiles actually have an impact. Like if you're wearing like a super hideous costume, does that make it worse than if you're wearing like just a, a panda head? Like I feel like if, if you if you viscerally react to the oh, horrifying nature no, no! of some of these masks, does that have more of an impact? Or um, I, I don't know. I guess now I'm gonna have to watch the show. Please God, no! No! <laughs> Ben's gonna watch this show, and so am I. Nick says, I'm gonna cook kit. Now I'll ki cook chicken just to spite her. Well, thank you. Morag says, as a furry, I'm not attracted to animals, nor am I attracted to people in fursuits. I just think they're cute and kind of neat. Yeah, I've heard that from most furries that I see in chat or whatever. It's not necessarily a sexual thing for most of them. Cheers. Uh, oh, look at this so one. Oh, no. I like your fin. <laughs> I like your fin. <laughs> okay, um. The dolphin, I think, is actually one of the better executed makeups. Like, the texture on it. Like, yeah, that looks like a kind of a cartoony dolphin. So, as David Burge put it, Iowa Hawk blog over on uh, Twitter, you know, in his day, when we had human dolphin abominations, they at least knew enough to cover their blowhole. What kind of immodesty is this? Just putting your blowhole out there for, for any straw man to see. Dude, put that thing away. They're like children here. We'll get to more in just one second. First, let me just remind you that you may think that what you're doing online is private. Add VPN.com. I have been made aware of a trailer on Netflix Whoops. for a new dating. What you expect underneath. Oh my God! Wait, I, I'm, noticing, uh, I'm noticing something. Every cutaway where they actually show what some of the people look like, these are all very attractive people. Yeah, it's a dating show, Ben. I've yet to see somebody who's hideously disfigured. Right, it turns out that pretty much the guarantee is that if you wear the mask, the mask is just a mask, and when you take off the mask, these people are not going to be hideous. What would make this actually interesting is if you took off the mask and it turned out to be like Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Bellum Guardian says I'd actually like the editing in this video if it wasn't Ben. Ah! Right, where like you took off the mask and half there is like Harvey Dent. Ah! Like, that would make this actually, like there's no risk factor here. What if everybody was really attractive and then there was one person who was just Language. unbelievably ugly? <laughs> yeah. But so far, every cutaway they have showed of one of these people shows that they are like at least an eight out of 10. So I feel like the, the downside risk for anybody competing is, now I hate this in real, like when I'm made, a promise about what a show is to be. I want that promise fulfilled. I remember there was a show way back when, and it was titled Joe Millionaire. One of the great reality show unkept promises of all time. And the entire premise of the show was that there was a guy. He I remember this one. was a millionaire, and women were going to date him in order to possibly marry him, and he was a millionaire. And then the whole gag of the show is that Joe was not, in fact, a millionaire. He was a plumber. And the whole hilarious aspect of the show was going to see all these women who were supposedly super into Joe, and then it turns out he's just a schmo, and then they all just dump him. Because it turns out they weren't into him, they were into his money. Except that when they got to the final episode, uh, yes, I watched this entire show. <laughs> um, Nick says, Ben Shapiro is funnier than Steven Crowder, changed my mind. And Morak says, that would require they bring me on and Ben, honey, they ain't paying enough for me. <laughs> I was like 17 or something. I watched it with my sisters. It was hilarious. When we got to the end of the show. Yeah, they gave him like a big check or something. They had Joe present the girl he had chosen with like a $50,000 piece of jewelry. So he completely destroyed the incentive structure. I think they gave him um, a check too, where they could either like stay together and, and share the money or they could split up and half the money. I don't remember how much they gave him though. Hydrate. Von Tuck says, I feel confident in commentary from a guy that doesn't understand vaginal wetness being related to arousal. Surely he understands everything. Structure. So of course she showed up. They didn't end up together, of course. Don't make this promise to be Netflix. If your entire show is going to be about how we have to find true love underneath with fugly people, then you have to make some of the people fugly. They can't all be attractive. But so far, I've yet to see an unattractive person because Netflix is having these cutaways of, of the people without their masks on. <laughs> I think the beaver guy is probably going to be less traditionally attractive based on the mask. It's this girl, and I don't know what she looks like. I'm literally just, like, in love with the... Like that guy, I think. Moment. Pull. In love with the moment. Okay. I've never understood the axe-throwing bars. I'd be, I, I feel like it's too dangerous. I also don't... I feel like after, like, throwing an axe three times, I'd be bored. I'd be like, all right. I sure did do that. Great. 
So they're just dating, Time wearing weird masks. This is gonna be really tough for me. I can't choose both of you. I've made my decision. My sexy beast is... Oh. There's interspecies relationships happening on my grounds. I won't stand for it. Oh, it's all about intolerance. That's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. That's a joke they were making, Ben. Logarth says, you get drunk and throw axes, it's fun. See, those seem like two activities that you should not mix together. Glad that we've reached this point in life. Teaching, you know, our citizens the highest of values. Ash first. Yep. Things are going great here in America. Probably we're going to be around in like 50 years. Probably. For sure. Maybe not. If we are, we're going to be some form of inbred Dr. Moreau. Bizarre interspecies product. I know, I'm, 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 I'm losing. I'm losing hope. Guys, I'm losing hope. I am dead inside. Alrighty. Well, I'm sorry that we had to watch that together. Maybe we'll do better next time. It's weird that there's the office clips in there. Does Ben Shapiro watch the office? And in the first like two seasons, like in season one in Diversity Day, does he think Michael Scott is legitimately hilarious and not in a he's horrifyingly offensive way, but in like a ha ha, Michael Scott, you sure do have insightful things to say about race. <laughs> Leave us a comment below, hit a like, hit a subscribe, hit a notification. So that way, next time I'm tortured with a video like this, you know about it first. So that's Ben. I just thought that'd be funny to watch. It was. There you go. Slightly offensive. I think it was this one. But before that, I wanted to take a look at... Lord of Patriarchy, Dave, who's still out here doing his shtick, whatever it is. And uh, this is an article he's reading, 100 Easy Ways to Make the World Easier for Trans People or Better for Trans People. And he's going to try and shit all over it while drunk, and I'm sure he's going to look very reasonable during it. Nick says, when's Ben going to cover Q-Force? Hopefully never... Okie dokie, uh, this is a Patreon request, um, a hundred easy ways to make the world a better place for trans people. Did Dave lose a clock? I think it gained sentience and was ashamed of its existence and decided to go and run away somewhere. I'm 99% sure that I actually did this, um, way back in the day. But I could be dead ass wrong. But I, I'm I'm willing to gamble I did. Um so but you know what? I'm always up for round two. Maybe we'll have a few more jokes. A few more of this, a few more of that. So let's get into it. A hundred easy ways to make the world better for trans people. All point one percent of them. I always find that an interesting point that they bring up when they say that there's so few trans people as if it matters. Like, yeah, trans people make up probably under a percent of the population. It doesn't mean you should disrespect us. Like, it's fine. You can just not be an asshole. That'd be cool. Jesus Christ. Why the fuck... <laughs> Really? We gotta reshape the world for 0.1% of the population? For the record, most of the things on this list that I saw were just, like, not being a dick and gendering people properly. It's not really changing the world as much as it is just, you know, being conscious of how you address people. It's not really a big deal. Hmm. Trans women are women. That's not up for debate, so don't try to. Well, yeah, it is. They still have dicks. Oh, that's a very insightful comment, Dave. I've never heard that critique of trans women before, which also isn't necessarily true for all trans women, which I find interesting. But I'm not drunk, and you are, so I'll give you a little bit of leeway on that one. Logarth says, 0.1% of the U.S. population is still like 4 million people. And Princess Amelia says, would anyone else pay good money to see a Lord of Patriarchy Terrence Pop drunk collab? <laughs> I think they both egg each other on and they both end up with alcohol poisoning.
Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's no positive way a cis person can dictate or speak on a life you do not live in a world you do not have to navigate as a trans person. You navigate the same fucking world I do. Well, I'm sorry you... Right, but our material conditions are very different, and our experiential existence is completely different from one another, which is what they're saying in shorthand. Can't play sports. Fuck you. They're very obsessed with the sports thing. Very interesting. Guess what? Neither can I. Uh, Von Tuck says, he's so drunk. Guess being a 2014-style anti-SJW in 2021 isn't too fulfilling. I would imagine not. Uh, and Zandil says, Lord of Patriarchy needs to reset his clocks to cubic time or he'll never be his full four-corner self. Aye. Wow, he's still at 10.6 thousand subscribers. That's a shame. I'm almost at 13,000 now, so that's cool. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. I'm close to 13,000. Oh, God. Watching him chug down that beer is like... Not a pleasant experience. Anyway... Morok says, as a trans woman, I'm pretty happy with my dick 70% of the time. Deal with it, gloop man. I can still give better head than you. <laughs> Bold of you to assume he gives head. Well, we actually need... What, hold on before I get into it. We actually need our ears, eyes, action. We need you to listen to our problems and our voices. The irony of him sarcastically saying that as he refuses to listen to the opinions of trans people on how to make our lives more bearable is palpable. Like, it's so funny that he's reading this in a sarcastic way and refusing to listen while someone is begging him, please listen to what our lives are like and how you can make our lives more bearable. And he's like, nah, fuck that. Uh, Rublum says, I have nothing fancy. Dave is just trash. No, I'm not! Normally your voices are fucking annoying! Glass houses, Dave. We need you to be on the lookout for- Your voices are all annoying! Yeah! <laughs> for how you can use your privilege! I don't have privilege! Nobody does! Nobody has any privilege? Well, we did it. We solved all inequity. Fuck you! And, of course, call out transphobia and blah. Logarth says, my working theory is Dave is a self-hating werewolf and is trying to treat his, lycanthro <laughs> his lycanthropy with silver bullets. He's obviously losing the battle as he appears to have accumulated more fur in the last several months. Soon he's just going to show up lapping beer out of a bowl and drunkenly howling at internet articles. Honestly, I think there I'd get more out of that than I would this. Blah, 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 blah. But here's the... Oh, yeah, he's very drunk. A hundred ways cis allies can help us. Here's as far as I'll go to be your cis ally. I don't believe you should be fundamentally treated any different than anyone else. I don't believe that you should have your rights different than anyone else. Outside of that, and I also believe you should get the surgery. Or be able to get the surgery. Outside of that, I don't believe in giving hormone blockers to children. I don't believe in the fact that you get to dictate dating preferences. It's not a thing for most trans people. I don't believe for a second that, um, that, uh, you know, you're actually a fucking woman. Okay. I disagree with you. But whatever. When you still have a cock. There it is. Anyway, let's get into the hundred. I didn't hear, but I could give a rat's ass less what Me Megan McCain goes after. Respect people's pronouns. This is not very complicated. If someone tells you how they identify, you have no say in the matter. Use the pronouns they use. No, I do have a say in the matter. Yeah, but you'd be an asshole if you did that. It's not illegal to misgender people. It just makes you a dick. 
Like Max says, from one fat guy to another, drop the beard, exercise, cut your neck beard, and learn to respect, uh, and maybe a woman will touch you. Good advice for David. I'll use the pronouns I goddamn well fucking wish. Okay, so is it cool if I call you, like, she then, Dave? Or them? Like, I... <laughs> that would go both ways. Still on pronouns. If you don't know somebody's pronouns and want to get it right, either use neutral pronouns or quietly ask the person. Von Tuck says he's transphobic, yes, but if there's anyone this miserable guy doesn't... Is there anyone this guy doesn't hate, though? He sounds like an all-around misanthrope in general. He is. H. Baird says, I'm a trans woman who's had bottom surgery. Does that mean I get the all-important Lord of Patriarchy approval? I guess so. And clearly that matters. Logarth says, Hagrid has really gone downhill after he got fired from Hogwarts. And Bardlock says, I call Lord of Patriarchy a piece of fucking shit, and that is my right. It is. God bless America. Be aware of your surroundings and those around you before doing so. Because this might put the... There is no unsafe situation. What do you think? They're going to be at some conference... And if they find out they're trans, they're going to get the fuck beat out of them? No, not going to happen. Any place where anyone give a, gives a rat's ass about pronouns? It's more just like, and yes, that does happen. But like, I think a lot of it's just like, you don't want to embarrass someone? I don't know. Yeah, probably a safe place to begin with. Three, trans folk can use gender-neutral pronouns. Please do not assume that they adhere to a binary. Well, they have to. There is a binary. You Except no, non-binary people exist. You have your males and your females. Fuck you. Lily Love Stuff says, How do I get the confidence of a less-than-mediocre white man? Um... When you're raised, basically, have everyone tell you you're great and never correct you on your misbehavior. Um, that's good. Have the media constantly telling you you're better than everyone else, implicitly, through the stories and narratives they tell. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll basically do it. The alcohol probably helps him as well. I wouldn't recommend that part, though. Nick says, article, don't be a dick. Lord of Patriarchy is a dick. There should, uh, he, sh there he showed those SJW cucks. <laughs> Try to start removing binary language from your everyday conversations. Just, no, I'm not going to. Fuck off, no. Well, Doc Bosa says, wait, the guy that doesn't have working clocks doesn't understand genders? Trans women are women. That is not a debate, for, so don't even try. No, they're not. Women do not have dicks. Some do. Trans men exist. We are often overlooked or forgotten, so try to remind yourself we're out here and can find the male cis world hard to navigate. Yeah, no shit. Because you can't or won't piss in the trough. Wow. Nick says, trans men exist? Ah, I see they're going with the Oreo strategy. Call out transphobia wherever you are, even if a trans person is not present. Be our defense. Hateful language perpetuates the dangerous, dangerous cycle of violence. Yeah, that's good advice. If you see someone being transphobic or homophobic or racist or anything like that, and you're, like, friends with them or whatever, um, even if you're not technically, but, you know... It's good to call that shit out and be like, hey, knock it off. Most of the violence that the trans community... Um, oh, I feel that this is going to be a profoundly ignorant statement, whatever he's about to say. ...experiences or has to deal with is usually related to drug culture. Oh, yikes. Not some weird transphobic culture. Oh, fucking yikes. Is he saying that... Um, I'm not even sure exactly what he's stating here. Drug culture, does he mean... Does he mean he thinks trans people are more likely to, like, OD than they are to get assaulted for being trans? Or does he mean, like, 
<laughs> Does he think trans people are, like, very connected to seedy drug dealers for some reason? I don't understand. And as for calling out transphobia wherever I am, no, I'm not going to. Okay. That'd be difficult for you since you're transphobic, so you'd have to be correcting yourself constantly. <laughs> Shut up. Especially if they're joking. Jokes are jokes. Fuck off. You if your only joke is, haha, trans people exist, that's not a joke. You're just being a shithead. It's not a joke any more than just being like, haha, black people exist. That's not a joke either. Just being racist or being transphobic isn't a joke. It's just being those things and then thinking those things are funny. You can get made fun of. Understand and be vocal that transphobia is never funny in jest or banter. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Fuck you. <laughs> wow. Don't refer to us as a whole. You, you, you've spent, you, you've sent, you spent the last couple points referring to the group as a whole, so fuck you on nine. Um, uh, Morak says, I've had people throw shit at me while I walk down the street. I've done exactly one weed and 15 opioids. They were prescribed. This man makes me sad. I know, we're not gonna sit here for the whole video, by the way, because it's probably just 40 minutes of this shit. <laughs> Is fuck you his answer to all the points? Probably, he's very drunk. No. Reject the idea that transitioning looks like one thing. People wish to transition in various ways. Well, if all they're really doing is putting on a dress, they're not really transitioning that hard. It's not really your business, Dave. It just isn't. You don't get to dictate how someone else chooses to represent themselves through their transition. It's just not your call. Ugh. If they don't medically transition, that doesn't mean they're any less trans. Well, at what point do we just have a cross-dresser? Okay, so uh, I believe the difference is someone who considers themselves a cross-dresser is someone who identifies as, let's say, male, but occasionally, because they like to, will wear feminine-coded clothing or vice versa but they don't consider that their actual gender identity. Whereas a trans person, their gender identity matches the sort of, how do I put this? Like I wear feminine clothes. This isn't particularly feminine, um, but I have a lot of feminine clothes that I wear and I'm trying to get more and I'm sort of filtering stuff like this out of my wardrobe more as I go on. Um, and I wear those clothes. It's not cross-dressing because it's not, it's not opposite of what I view my gender identity to be. If I wear feminine clothes and I identify as female, then that's not cross-dressing. That's just dressing um, outwardly to show my gender identity. Von Tuck says, How does this guy have an audience if you watch Drunk Gen X Red Letter Media is far superior choice? Yeah, and they're not generally transphobic or anything. <laughs> Garo the Khajiit says, I'm here for 30 seconds and I already want to hit Dave with a wet fish. Lovely. Yeah, this video only has 346 views. So, um, I have almost the same number of people here now. I only have 10 fewer people here watching me live now than he has had watch this video that's been posted to YouTube for like eight days. Fun fact. Uh, Kirthin says snipe and becomes the stream boss. There's no such thing as less trans or more trans, blah, 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 shut up. Oh, got him. He told that article to shut up. What a rebuttal. Never ask anything about our genitalia or body. Well, geez. You just said a moment ago trans women are women... I would like to know if I'm, if I lift up the dress, am I going to see the fake vagina or a big honking floppy dick? Why? Are you going to assault someone? Because they're certainly not going to consensually show you anything. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the fucking hell? 
Uh, Bardlock says, so being drunk isn't YouTube TOS? Honestly, being this drunk might be. I don't know. Sky Comet Fallen says, some people present femme or mask and aren't actually trans too. They just feel more femme or mask. Yep, and that's fine. It's all sorts of gray areas. That's life. Here's a link to his video if you want a link for any reason. Let's not forget that we do not all know each other. The queer community is bigger than you think. No one in no one on planet Earth thinks every gay guy knows every other gay guy. Try to re refrain from using language that is heavily influenced or derived from queer culture if this is not your community. No, I'm going to use the words I want. Fuck off. Do not enter queer or trans safe spaces without a queer person asking. I'll enter whatever space I want. <laughs> it's kind of in my nature. I have a feeling he's probably um, against trans people using the appropriate bathrooms that I that are correlated with their gender identity. Weirdly, Nick says, "Go enter Area Fifty One, then, Dave." I mean, if we're talking about blah, 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 being your true self. <laughs> Barnlock says, so we can go into a women's bathroom? I'm a cis straight white male. My nature is to conquer spaces. So I shall conquer. When you're in a queer space, repeat, this is not my space. No, I'll be in whatever space I choose to be in. Fuck off. Be aware of your hands. Do not touch people without consent in all spaces. That's just good with that's good advice in general. <laughs> A lot of people don't like to be touched. Don't touch people. Logard says the only thing Dave has ever conquered is a twelve pack of cores by himself on a Friday night. It's fine. Not not a problem with this one. Keep, 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 keep your hands to yourself. Except if you are a straight man in a gay man space, you might get unwanted touching. Wow, okay, predatory gay trope. That's good to throw on the pile of bad shit he said in this video. <laughs> Bardlock Moses says, I can't read that. If you're called out for being offensive, do not argue. No, I'm going to argue the point, especially if I don't think I'm being transphobic, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a problem. You don't really get to make that determination, Dave. This is not a debate. Apologize. Take a moment. No, I'm not going to admit defeat uh, uh, immediately. Wow, okay. So he's just going to be obstinate in any scenario. He's not even coming up with a hypothetical where he's actually right. He just... No matter what, if he gets questioned on something, he's going to say no. Princess Amelia says, <laughs> I can't read that verbatim. Fuck off. Never try to argue with a trans person that something isn't transphobic. No, I'm going to argue it because half the time it's normally ridiculous. Such as? Remind us that being trans isn't a burden or a bad thing. Fine on that one, actually. I'll, I, you've got two of me that have I've said fine. You're right. It's not a, a bad thing. Might be a bit of a burden with all the surgery and shit, but it's not a bad thing. Recognize the strength and power of your voice. I do. That's why I'm trying to dismantle people like you. <laughs> now use it. This is beyond lazy. I agree. Even for him, this is a pretty low effort video. We're going to bail in a second. It already am. If a trans person is being verbally assaulted, made to feel unsafe or uncomfortable, or being attacked in any way and needs your help, open your mouth. Well, it depends on the situation. Again, there's... In what situation would a trans person being assaulted verbally or otherwise be okay? There's a big difference between some guy with a beard as long as mine saying I'm a woman and men should have sex with him. 
Wouldn't it be nice to just be able to come up with hypothetical scenarios that don't exist in real life just to back up your points and then assume that that's a good argument? Make life a lot easier. Or straight men should have sex with him. And if they don't, then they're transphobic pieces of shit. Or some jackass like Riley Dennis saying, some girls have penises. No. Yeah. No, they fucking don't. Yeah, they do. <sighs> that being said, do not become the ally that speaks over trans people. So you want me to fight for you, but not too much. Again, fuck off. Talk to us about... Fine, fine. Three of them I agree with. If I stick up for a trans person, no, I don't expect to get my dick sucked for being a decent human being. How drunk does he get by the end of this? If, if, if I was... Kirthen says alcohol or a chew uh, is someone building something out of straw hanging out with somebody like, like let's say I was hanging out with Blair White and I don't think Blair White would ever hang out with you no offense man she was leaving and she didn't have an escort I would walk her home but that's just a polite male thing to do that I would extend to any other female or let's say guy that i didn't think could defend himself and i'm not the biggest guy in the world either logarth says 100 percent dave has the t-slur in his porn hub search history I, I i could put money on that uh garo the khajiit says all transphobia is just another face for oh god what if the gay <laughs> or what if i'm gay rather and bardlock says no one wants to hang out with him either nowhere near it but it's a polite thing to do so i'm fine with 65 do not think you're saving us we don't need saving you're helping us to have everyone out that you're he really needs to get one of these mic socks they're like 12 bucks on amazon dave for human beings but as for loving you well that's going to be a tall order watch pose paris and now Learn the correct terminology. Oh my god. Assigned gender at birth. No one was assigned a gender. They are. You were. People were born with a fucking gender. You are born with a sex. A doctor was not sitting there when you were being born... You came out of your mother's cunt. And really? And that happens to be gay, but you're also a doctor, lawyer, chemical engineer, uh, mechanic. What? Uh, you grew up in the greatest nation on earth, <laughs> in the most privileged circumstances on earth. Would you have wrote this list? If you were some dirt poor match girl in India? What is this non sequitur? Oh, that's right. Of course you wouldn't have. Not everything needs labels. My grandmas would say, baby, some things just be as they be. Fine. Intimacy can be even more complicated for trans folk. Respect boundaries. And ways people feel comfortable with nudity, tac, tacit, whatever, sex. This may mean being patient and alone, learn what we deem it. Oh, he is very drunk by the end of this. The Silver One says, I can't understand why so many people don't want people to live their best life. It literally doesn't hurt you what gender people identify as. I know. I don't get it either. The sex. Okay, if I'm dating a chick with a dick. She's got two holes. One in the ass. And one in the mouth. There is no third hole. There will never be a third hole. If there is, I'm essentially just knifing her. 
Fucking yikes! Ender92 says, You're right, Dave. We are so privileged that I have to coupon clip for my Lexapro so I don't Minecraft myself even with insurance. Oh god, there's coupons for medication? Ugh. <laughs> the emphasis with the beer drinking is always on point. He isn't dating Today, anyone. Woman is dating a trans guy um she might want to read up on how to eat pussy just saying there's no dick involved again that's where the strap-on comes on like sex isn't that fucking complicated Logarth says, there is a third hole, Dave. Surprise, it's yours. Yeah, we can do a cleanse after this one. I, I think Dave doesn't understand that trans people might have certain issues around their genitals and certain... How do I put this in a way that's nice? Um, without getting into my personal experience, because I don't want to... There are some sexual acts or way of going about sexual acts... That will make certain trans people uncomfortable because of gender dysphoria surrounding their genitals, right? So, if you're dating a trans person, or in some sort of sexual relationship, you don't necessarily have to be dating, um, then you need to understand and respect those boundaries. So, some trans people might not want to do oral um, because it it it, provi it it puts a lot of focus on their genitalia. Some people might, if you're going to do that, do it in certain ways. It's just going to depend on the individual person and how they experience sex, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's a real thing that you do need to consider. And I don't think Dave understands or respects that. Red Werewolf says, that's a lot of words to say. I'm bad at uncreative at sex. Um, Ender92 says, by the way, it's called GoodRx. If anyone was interested, I didn't know about it until recently. Get your medication if you need it. Not sponsored. Bardlock Moses says, if I call Dave the I-word, I'm the bad guy. Uh, Logarth says, woot, sorry, getting a little too close to Daddy Sume levels there. <laughs> and then Ginger Snip Snap says, Hannah, what is the safe word? Also, I can't get over how cute your bangs are. Thank you. I trimmed them today, so I'm hoping they look okay. I, I got a little thingy here that I got to fix, I think, after the stream, but... Anyway, uh... Uh, thank you, Baja. It's just for me. I'd rather keep it kind of <laughs> personal. I, I said enough with what I said. I want to find your own ways to disrupt the cis world. No, I'm not going to because I don't care to. And... I think I'm going to take a little break. And... <laughs> He's going to go pass out for a couple dozen hours. Uh, Sarah Mac 97 says, Hi Hannah, why do transphobes and often cis men act like only trans women exist? Because trans women make them question their own identity and sexuality, whereas trans men don't. It's entirely about their own insecurities. Morak says, Personally, I have no shame. I, ha I don't really like using my dick, partially because I'm fairly impotent, but I... But I suck a mean one. <laughs> Haven't been with a female at birth person, so I don't know how to go about things there, to be honest. Okay, it's interesting. And, uh, I may be back, and we'll do uh, the video Jitterbug 76, or 79, 679. Excuse me, uh, sent to me. But until then, um, I guess. <laughs> oh, the VOD was drunk, too. Just kind of passed out there. Hello. <sighs> Maybe. This is 18 minutes long, though. I don't want to do an 18 minute long cleanse. What's Sausage Guy up to? Guacamole Sausage? 
Yeah, we can do that. Oh, we need a ha- Wait, we gotta do habanero sausage first. Well, goodbye, Colin, and thanks for all the memories. YouTube comment suggestions. So we're gonna be doing seeds and all. Uh. That, that looks like the devil. It's a whole different level of weird with the gloves on. Let's commence with the stuffing. Please don't make me play Will It Blow. So will it blow? <laughs> oh no! Mama! Five Mark Ruffalos! Let's show Yeah, it's it. just peppers. How didn't this burst? This actually looks like a really tasty sausage. Here we go! <gasps> well, it's, uh, obviously it's zero out of five! <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked more of a reaction there, but okay. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Well, goodbye, Colin, and thank. Let's watch the avocado one, and then we'll maybe do the John Doyle thing. Well, hey there, folks, and uh, welcome back. I guess. You know, I, I have I have some real high hopes for this sausage. It's gonna have hot avocados in it and way more garlic than the recipe calls for. There's no pot of, of boiling oil in this episode, so, so it can only go well. Enough with the talking and more t making things into sausage. Uh, so it's the, the guacamole sausage. <laughs> All right, the first thing we gotta do is everyone's favorite activity. We gotta chop the ingredients. Starting with mincing half an onion and putting it in a bowl. Then chop a tomato and your cilantro and also put those things in a bowl. Take three avocados and you're not gonna believe what I'm about to tell you, but you're gonna peel those avocados and also put them in a bowl. Squeeze a lime in a bowl. And then put that lime juice that is in the small bowl into the big bowl. Ruin the shot by shoving your fat hands right in the way of what people need to see. And then don't correct it at all. Yeah, stick your hands in there, you idiot. Then skip the small bowls altogether and stick the garlic straight into the avocado bowl. Oh, and also the cilantro can go in now. Stir. Add the onions and the tomatoes and stir again. Add some salt to taste as well as cayenne pepper and then stir it one last time. Well, I've seen better guac, but what really matters here is how does it taste? Well, that's some good guacamole. Let's throw it in the grinder. This step has literally no purpose to the process whatsoever. Everything is gonna be all right. Sausage bite. I'm thinking this is enough sausage casing. How much guacamole sausage can I really eat? Put this right back on here. Give it a little. And look at that. No more accidents. This is a silly sausage. Three, two, one. Let's sausage. You know, that's probably way more guacamole sausage than one person needs. Will it blow? <laughs> you know, it, it, it kind of blew. I'm going to have to give that will it blow. Three Mark Ruffalos. All right, it's time for the guac sauce. Oh, oh my god! We're far from done. It, it, I, and you know, in fact, I think this helps us cook the rest of the sausage. Yeah, it's just getting soggier. Are you first? Oh! oh. It, it bursts! It's completely burst. <laughs> I can't remember the last time we had a sausage fail this, this badly on the show. Look at this thing. Or don't look at this thing. This thing's a monstrosity. Here you go. Everything, everything's going to be okay. Here, here we go. There we go. On paper, this sausage sounded really neat, but in practice, it's a total bust. Let's go ahead and give this a shot, shall we? 
I'm spinning it out. So hot avocado is, 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 is not good. By all accounts, this is a terrible sausage. Obviously, it's disqualified because it, 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 it didn't make it. But if it wasn't disqualified, it would most certainly get a zero out of five. So there it is. That's the end of this episode. Final score, disqualified. Bop, 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 bop. One more cleanse, what's this? Right, um, Yorkshire the thinks it's in a bit. Yeah, I have this pulled up already. I'll save it for either later or another time. I don't know if we'll do another cleanse. So, John Doyle hasn't put out his uh, video on the LGBT community on his channel yet. I guess he's been busy over here on Slightly Offensive, where he's making a video where he and his other correspondents, pundits, whatever you want to call them, are very concerned about the fact that there's a report that Tucker Carlson's emails or something are under surveillance by the FBI for some sort of communication with a foreign entity to undermine American democracy or something. Kind of funny. Um, they seem kind of panicked in this video, which I find interesting, so I thought we should check it out. In terms of climate, you brought up what's happening, what we're seeing in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we've been talking a lot about what happened in Florida at the Surfside condominium building that collapsed. We don't know exactly what happened at this point. The government is gaslighting us into thinking that the problems in the world are white supremacy. You know, those proud boys attacking Asians on the streets of New York every single day in the videos that are going viral. They also say climate change is what caused pretty much every issue in your life. And if that doesn't work, you can always do what I do and blame Obama. But in a serious note, the government the right are the people that blame Obama for everything. What? Uh, Silver One says John Doyle is still a thing. There is no God. Yeah. Government has gone rogue for some time now, but it's escalated in the last few years. Intelligence. You guys were uh, were completely fine with the government up until January twentieth. That's weird. Agencies are spying on journalists. Our own. FBI is being weaponized to incriminate our own citizens and the war has started. Soft revolution has begun as the government wages battle on the people of this nation. That's some hyperbole. Nick says, and conservatives are gaslighting us to think that immigrants and communists are a problem, idiot. <laughs> Welcome to July. We are done with pride. So we've gotten rid of our transgender colors here in the studio. My name's Elijah Schaefer, and I am your top 17 host here at Slightly Offensive, the best worst show on Blaze TV. And I have a big announcement before we jump into the stories. I have a great guest here today. I have Pastor John Schaefer. That's his for uh, formal name. He's also known as my dad. And he has laryngitis. He's laryngitis <laughs> oh, dad. No. Welcome to Slightly Offensive for the first time. Thank you, Elijah. And yes, I do have a pretty raspy voice today. I actually did an Easter service with this voice before. <laughs> this this is like a Tim and Eric sketch. Why would you come in and do this <laughs> with laryngitis? He has laryngitis good, says Nick. Well, God bless those congregants. That's John 1 for today. Just to make things more confusing, as we always do on this show, brought us somebody else named John. John Doyle, our black person expert, is back on the show here. It's already bad. Here 
for another episode. Where's my confetti? Yeah, where's the confetti? There you go. We have confetti of color. We also have Savannah Hernandez, our resident reporter and producer. You also get some confetti as well. And can you Thank show us you. your shirt? Thank can you show you. us yeah. your shirt? I thought that this shirt would be fitting for today's show. It's just a nice <laughs> little picture of the mountains. What can I say? It's true. Before we jump into that, uh, please remember, as always, to leave a review, a five-star review at Apple Podcasts. Uh, or on Spotify or Google Play, anywhere else we can find podcasts. We're, we might even read your review at the end of the show. It helps us out a lot. And guys, a lot of you comment and you're not subscribed to this show here on YouTube, Rumble, or Odyssey. So please hit that button. Become a, subscri a subscriber. Hit the bell to get our notifications because the battle is before us, but you guys continue to support us. Thank you so much, as always. Well, if you can go to my screen, Savannah, let's talk about this. Mike Cernovich has pointed out that it is now July 1st, technically July 2nd. And the FBI still has not found out who planted a pipe bomb at the RNC on January 5th, not to mention... I find that so fucking funny that they're like, who did this terroristic action at the same time and place as all those MAGA people were doing a terroristic action? Lily Lovestuff says the FBI constantly infiltrates left-wing movements and the legislation passed is always used to target left-wing movements more as we go further that a whistleblower with direct knowledge told Tucker that the NSA is reading his emails. However, Tucker should ask him whether anyone over there is looking into the origins of this COVID-19 thing. I don't know, 600,000 Americans have died. Wait, is it not a big deal and it's just the flu or is it a big deal and you are going to use it to deflect from the fact that according to this person, Tucker Carlson is under investigation by the FBI? Because other right-wingers told me it's not a big deal and it's a conspiracy. And other people are like, oh, it's China's fault. We should do something to China because of it. And then other people are like, but it's not a big deal, though, so I'm not wearing a mask and I'm not getting vaccinated. Which one is it? You kind of need to pick a narrative and stick to it. Morak says, wait a second, slightly offensive. A co-worker here at Apple recommended his podcast to me. Fuck, he seemed cool. Oh, well. And Nick says they always care more about how COVID started than they do anything about stopping it. And they haven't produced any meaningful intel over the past 18 months. And as Donald Trump recently asked, who shot Ashley Babbitt? Um, a cop that was defending Congress people from the terrorists who broke into the building and were threatening them. Well, all these amazing questions are unable to be answered because we are too busy trying to hunt down, attack, and find the grandmas who toured the Capitol building on January 6th. Toured the Capitol building? Let's take a look at this tour. How? What, what a fun tour they went on. <laughs> Hold on. Let's take a look at this tour, guys. I love tours. Yay! I love, I absolutely love tours. Yay! Had no chance. I love tours where you physically fight cops and murder one. Yay! What a fun tour, guys! This is so fun! It's just a tour. It's just a bunch of grandmas on a tour. Yay! Wee! Oh, How fun! We want to... Insanity! Some broke into the Senate. <sighs> no speech was even finished. One man flashed. What a fun tour! You know, I went to Washington D.C. in middle school, and it wasn't as fun as this tour. You get it. They're liars. They're lying and being incredibly disingenuous to try and downplay what they are a party to by spreading this political misinformation. Nick Snope read that one. Ma uh, Mike says, Republicans flip-flop more than a Magikarp. Nick says, more like Ashley Babbitt <laughs> off more than she could chew. Silver One says the disassociation needed to treat a riot as a tour is outright disgusting. And Logarth says, Hannah, are you starting uh, Cupcake Kittens Channel 2? <laughs> Absolutely.
it'll be fully monetized. The world has been weaponized against us and we are fighting for our own lives. I know you've heard about this. You watch Tucker all the time, dad. I do. And it does, and you know that the NSA, he has evidence, is spying on him, is spying on his show. They have obtained his texts, his emails, and they're not even denying that they've done that. Right. I, I... The funny thing is in the statement from the FBI basically said, if we were looking at, uh, they basically said we're neither confirming nor denying that we have done this, but if we were doing it, we would need a warrant based on these factors. And the factor was something along the lines of, colluding with a foreign entity to undermine American democracy or something, which made it sound very much like they're going, now we can't confirm or deny this, wink, wink, but Tucker Carlson isn't some shady shit and we're investigating him, which I found pretty funny. I wonder if they'll bring that up at all. Probably not. Uh, Lily Love Stuff says, I used to work as a tour guide in DC and honestly, I kind of missed that job, but these people make me happy I quit seven years ago. I bet. I read about that, and so I heard about the whistleblower, and I know that, you know, often these things do turn out to be true, which in this case... He's a public figure. They're probably spying on all on all of the celebrities. I don't know about that. It seems like it'd be a huge waste of manpower. Man 642 says, What's up with these right-wing YouTubers having their dads on their shows? It's the father issues. It's the weird father issues. Logarth says, Ben Shapiro dad, Steven Crowder's dad, and now this Chud's dad. Do these guys have their own thoughts, or are they all living in their father's missed youth fantasies? It's that. Um, Speedy Yoshi says, they went on a tour of the capital, like how the U.S. military goes on through a tour of the Middle East. <laughs> case, um, I think that's probably the way it's going to go. And also reading that they um, have denied this, but at the same time, Obviously, that's what would happen is it would be denied. Yeah, I want to get your thoughts on this, uh, John, number two. Uh Robert Morley with 5,000 bits. Thank you. Have you seen the latest Peter video? In the end. Yeah, I think we actually watched this one yesterday because he posted it to his other channel. Uh, unfortunately, I had to delete that VOD. So my thoughts on this video of Peter's are just gone in the ether forever. Winchanter says, uh, Megan McCain getting kicked off the view. <laughs> Uh, I did see she's leaving. Um, so I'm going to read the official statement. If you can go to my screen, the NSA was accused of spying on Tucker Carlson. Now, we know that the FBI and Homeland Security have done a little bit of, of that on us here at this show. We've had our own fair share of, of the government agencies showing up to my private residence, harassing my neighbors, doing surveillance on my house. So uh, this Stop being stochastic terrorists, then. Stop promoting shit that spurs your audience to do things like attack the United States Capitol, you dumb asshole. Garrow the Khajiit says, oh, Doyle is number two, all right. And Nick says, they'd be okay with left-wing celebrities being spied on. For fuck's sake, Prigger, you, uh, S-word for devotional fan... For devotional fan for Watergate. Ah, I see what you're saying. They, they went to bat for Watergate. This has mattered for a... Defended Watergate long time but the nsa released a a statement saying that on june 28th tucker carlson who if you don't know is a host at fox news <clears throat> alleged that the national security agency has been monitoring our electronic communications and is planning to leak them in an attempt to take the show off the air this allegation is untrue tucker has never been an intelligence target of the agency and the nsa has never had any plans to try to take his program off the air however they did not say that they have not been monitoring his emails and his texts the bottom part that's the important part here says the NSA has a foreign intelligence mission. We target foreign powers to generate insights on foreign activities that could harm the United States with limited ex exceptions. The NSA may not target a citizen without a court order that explicitly authorizes the targeting. They're basically saying, if we are looking at Tucker Carlson's emails, it's for a national security reason. Winchanter says, no, everyone on the show basically told the new network leadership that they would not work with her. Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, uh, I think it would be a mischaracterization to describe the FBI at this point as just incompetent. It's actually approaching a level of explicit malevolence towards the American people. And it's like with what you mentioned about they're targeting you, they're targeting Tucker Carlson. We have evidence of this. Uh, I was driving through Michigan before I moved here, and I saw federal police had bought billboards on all the major highways in Michigan saying we want um, pictures and evidence of people who may have been at the January 6th thing. We'll offer cash. Good. Turn in anyone you know.
who was illegally breaking and entering into the United States Capitol building to try and overturn an election, turn them in, get the money, fuck them. Cash rewards, like literally analogous to when, you know, we had the secret police and different communist regimes throughout history. And it's... <laughs> Ah, yes, and as we all know, the secret police in the Soviet Union only tried to capture people who had broken several federal laws against breaking into federal buildings and interrupting Congress while in session. It's because the intelligence agencies and apparatuses in this country have always served at the uh, at the hands of the regime and like as an extension of whatever occupying regime that is. So maybe 70, 80 years ago, they were trying to find out you know who the communists were and trying to get them and screw them over. But now because the communists have infiltrated all of the the net. Here's my uh, hold on. I need I need a special hat for this. I think in this video they sound a little panicked more so than they normally do. They sound kind of distraught by this information. So here's my tinfoil hat, no evidence theory, okay? Nick Fuentes is already apparently under investigation uh, for a large transfer of like $50,000 or something like that in Bitcoin um, just before the January 6th uh, attack on the United States Capitol. Uh, uh, this Bitcoin transfer was apparently from some sort of foreign entity. Um, he's now on like no-fly lists and stuff. It's very interesting. John Doyle is a friend of Nick Fuentes, and of course, John Doyle is a friend of this show. It wouldn't surprise me if a large number of people in this sort of circle somehow were made to put, be put in contact with some sort of foreign entity that wanted to give them money and funding in order to help spur the sort of action that was taken on the 6th. Now... The FBI may or may not be looking into this through people like Tucker Carlson, people like Nick Fuentes, people like John Doyle. And now that they are aware that this sort of investigation might be taking place, I think they might be a little panicked because they may have taken part. And again, this is no, no evidence. This is tinfoil hat bullshit. But I do a lot of conspiracy theories, so you get into that mentality. My thought is that maybe they're concerned that they're going to be implicated in some of this. Probably not, though. But a girl can dream. <laughs> uh, Von Tuck says, what isn't communism to these people? Fascism. Robert Morley says, LMAO with the tinfoil hat. Silver One says, I'm going to be working in Texas this fall and maybe going to grad school there next year. But knowing Doyle now lives there is going, giving me second thoughts. Texas is large. Um, I'd be more concerned about the power grid. <laughs> necessary apparatuses they can then flip the tables and wield that power against american citizens who actually care about their country right and this is where this is where it's going to get crazy and i know i'm going to piss a couple people off here and i like to do that uh so if, you're, true. if you're new to this show i'm going to explain something that is borderline could be seen as gaslighting towards a a civil war or a peaceful divorce but i want to clarify i'm not the one gaslighting this i just been pointing out how the government is gaslighting us into trying to stoke a soft revolution this is key I am not gaslighting, they are. Tim Pool is the government? Good to know. Because in the second part of this statement that we need to break down, the national security, this, this is the NSA, has a foreign intelligence mission saying we target foreign powers to generate insights on foreign activities that could harm the United States. With limited exceptions, an emergency. NSA may not target a U.S. citizen without a court order that explicitly authorizes the targeting. And I want to break this down. They said that they are looking to target foreign intelligence. Foreign nations. I believe that there are currently two nations in this country. There is the Biden regime, the GAE. This is what they are doing. They are the global homo uh, mafia. They, they work. <laughs> he said the thing. They have their own flag. They continue to develop it. They've colonized this country. They've sold out our economy to China. They continue to move on this nation. And they've continued to demonize every single person who still is a citizen of the patriotic United States of America. They've demonized our flag. They've demonized our anthem. They've demonized uh, all of our... Hey, here's the link to this video for absolutely no particular reason if you want it. <laughs> Globo homo. All all of our shows of patriotism. They've taken every one of our parts of our history to tear down. They've demonized the majority race of the country, white people. They They've attacked our, our, our historical religion, Christianity, and they've even, they've even come to take away our language by redefining our words. And so what is happening? 
words changing like they always have hurts my feelings. What happened is as Tucker's tried to make a point and has tried to iterate, but I'd like to reiterate to the audience, we are now the foreign, we are the foreign nation. No, their implication was not that you are a foreign nation just for disagreeing with the majority of people in this country. The implication that was is that Tucker Carlson may have been in contact with some sort of foreign entity. And I think you know that. But you're trying to deflect from that fact, which is a little suspicious. And the regime of Biden is now focusing their efforts to target us, those who do not fall in line with their party. And that's the problem, is that we do not submit to the, that is their soft revolution. They transform the country away. See, I don't even think John Doyle buys this shit. Because usually if you're listening to someone talk and you agree with them, not always, but like the body language exhibited by the dad with laryngitis sort of shows that he's agreeing with this statement. He's kind of nodding, nodding along. John Doyle is just dead in the face, just staring. Like he doesn't necessarily agree with this tactic that he's going with, but he has to. It's very strange. Right said Rob, thanks for nine months. That's a sub baby. This sub baby's name is going to be uh, Lauren... Jitis. <laughs> Lauren Jitis. Away from what the founding fathers wanted. And the only people that are not submitting to that have now become a separate entity. In fact, Biden has, 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 has his administration has called us terrorists. Tens of millions. No, he didn't call all Republicans terrorists. But if you were involved in the January 6th thing, yeah, you are. Von Tuck says, how I wish Biden was even a tenth of the anti-fascist communist they says he is. Yeah of Americans, potential terrorists. Of um, Sky Comet Fallen says, you aren't a foreign nation. That's why the word domestic is used for your type of terrorist. Of right-wing extremism, which has been subjugated down simply to the idea that we still hold these things to be true and self-evident, that all men are created equal, that by these rights, inalienable rights given to us by God, right? We have life, liberty, we have pursuit of happiness, and these things have, these are, these are our rights from God. We are the enemy now in this country, and the emergency at first was the Patriot Act, Right, that was the emergency that allowed everyone to spy on citizens. And now we're in a global pandemic and we have white supremacy on the rise and climate change. There's tons of emergencies and tons of excuses to spy on us. Right, and that's the problem. It's a very sobering realization for a lot of people out there to know that if you are, are like a real human being, you're not an NPC, you have- There's the NPC talk again. Dehumanizing the people you disagree with politically and acting as though they aren't even human beings to the point that you're calling them NPCs. Not a great road to go down. Not good. Kind of lets you morally decide you can do anything necessary to stop those people from having any sort of political power. Kind of fashy. Have agency, you possess the internal monologue, you're an American citizen, you're also a patriot, you love this country. Nick says, all men are created equal is what the globo homo is fighting for, you doughhead. <laughs> you have no institutional representation, you have no- What are NPCs? NPCs in the context of a video game are non-playable characters. So it's like the characters that you are not playing that you interact with. The implication when right-wingers say NPC basically means you are not a real person. You look like a person. You maybe even act like a person sometimes, but you don't have any internal monologue. You're not a real person. You're just, you're just a program that is going through their day. You're basically, they're dehumanizing you. They're dehumanizing you to make them feel better about the fact that they want to kill you. Lily Lovestuff says the Patriot Act was initiated by a Republican administration. That was your guy, asshats. You know, political representation and your cultural re uh, representation, like you mentioned, is dwindling. The th things that you listed off, those can be properly classified as like humiliation rituals. Like, what do they really gain by having the NFL come out and be like, football is gay? Or what do they really... Wait, do they think the government's in charge of the NFL? ...gain by having like, you know, Mr. Potato had become gender neutral. Nothing, maybe. But We talked about that. That was bullshit, too. What it is, is taking these things... That they just changed the brand from Mr. Potato Head to Potato Head because they sell more than just Mr. Potato Head. So they have Mr. Potato Heads and Mrs. Potato Heads and Baby Potato Heads and Pet Potato Heads. So the brand is called Potato Head, but like the individual figures are still Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. It's a manufactured controversy by the right. You know, whether or not we like to acknowledge it, we're kind of central to American culture and identity and, and literally draping them in the globo homo flag and agenda. Like, oh, that thing you like? Football, one of America's like greatest accomplishments culturally on the world. Fo 
I, again, I don't have any problem with football, but I find that to be a questionable statement. <laughs> well, that's gay now. And it's like, as a man, you know, not that we're against that, but it's just kind of like, really? We can't have even football anymore? It's to humiliate people. Same thing with when they, they put the BLM flag and the pride flag next to the American flag. Or when they take down the monuments, it's just to humiliate Black people. men in Why does it humiliate you? Dresses? Yeah, yeah. They're always putting black men in dresses. They're what are you talking about? <laughs> buck breaking them. Yeah, they are buck breaking them. Oh, fucking yikes. That's the term you're going to use? Oh, no. She, this is out to you. We won't buck break you, but I would love to have you on the show. <laughs> I would love to have you on the show. But I again, here's a link to this video if you want it for any reason at all. No particular reason. You as a pastor, as somebody who cares about this, I mean, you've seen... Th Do I need to explain why that's a racist term to people who have not heard that term before? Lily Love Stuff says, oh, speaking football in France, they call American football baby foot. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen over the years, the house church attendance. It's basically, um, that would be a term, like, if you got a new slave who was a male who did not comply with what you wanted them to do, torturing them, whipping them, etc. would be considered that in order to break them and get them to comply with what you want. So it's, uh, it's an um, allusion to uh, chattel slavery in the United States gone over the last few years i mean how, how have you seen things change morally how have you seen things move in our country as, as things have shifted politically right people don't care about politics they're like i'm sure a lot of congregants don't care about politics like i want to stay out of it i just want to serve god i want to do my thing these policies are affecting the nation and i i know you've seen changes in family and structure and even just people who come to church and all these things from the pandemic itself alone you've seen like world events affect how people behave in real life according to the standards of not only god but also of just american culture as you've known it right i'm seeing that you know there's obviously some church members that really care about it a lot and there's a lot of people that are just busy going to work and raising their families and don't have a lot of time to look into all of this but definitely down the line it does affect their families and over the years you do i can't listen to laryngitis guy i'm sorry he should, he should not have come on that day because it's insufferable a tucker union bitch there i as far as it felt kind of, we i can deal with the fascism i can't deal with the raspy voice would think that that day the way things i think normal, normal and getting spied on personal privacy is not there and everybody just knows everything because they've been getting spied on by tech companies tech companies made people used to having our information sold given out to people we don't know and people are used to being monitored it's like people even just talk about it, like oh i'm talking in a conversation and suddenly what i'm talking about gets advertised to me on instagram and it's really interesting how they do that like i was talking to, to, to kez about getting slippers and now i have a bunch of ads for slippers i didn't even look them up that are coming on my instagram and they it picks up your voice i mean they're spying on us all the time they can tap literally into anything and it's so funny because the nsa is like the nsa can do illegal things but if you don't remember this nine years ago Right, uh, a little man named Edward Snowden. Uh, he tried to warn us about this, about what was going on and how the Patriot Act, which we're going to get into, for because a lot of people, like you said, are young. They don't know about the Patriot Act. They don't understand how uh, the government used 9/11 to create a surveillance police state, similar, yeah, similar to what the communists did before the Iron Curtain fell. I don't know about that comparison, but it's still bad. And it's only gotten worse and worse. They used it to spy on Trump's campaign. They used it to spy on political enemies. That was because Trump was committing illegal acts. Montuck says, why do chud pastors never emphasize thou shalt not kill or love thy neighbor bits, but always the obscure creepy bits that glorify bigotry? You know why? Because their motives are political, not religious. Nick says, so he's against Matt Walsh wanting cameras in every classroom to make sure teachers aren't teaching the children wrong thing, right? <laughs> Projecting yourself like a Oops. giant penis. Sorry, gotta save that for later. Whoopsie. And they even used the FISA warrants to spy on us, American citizens. Edward Snowden was like, they, you know, he exposed what they did, and they're saying that him, him exposing their criminal activity. Was he gonna say penis? Let's see what he was gonna say. Projecting yourself like a giant penis into the world as a woman pales in comparison to doing great work in the home, in the- Yep, he was gonna say penis. 
activities is illegal. And that's when you know the government no longer represents you, is when you, the government tries to hold us accountable by keeping us in line through surveillance, and then we surveil them, and they say, uh-uh, you're not allowed to do that. We are the ones in power. Honestly, in a way, I think that they almost do represent the people in that that happened, everyone knew about it, and the NSA just kind of went like, yeah. And then a few years later, uh, they made that movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, you know, Snowden, and everyone saw it, and they're like, whoa, this is terrible. And then the next day they went to work, and then they went and they got lunch and like nothing had there's no accountability uh on the government's part because the citizens are basically like npcs and they just don't have agency because again the dehumanization of his political enemies cousin i don't know the the neurochemistry well enough to explain this but a lot of problems you don't say john doyle 21 year old who just moved out of his parents house for the first time doesn't go to college doesn't have any sort of knowledge of neurology i'm shocked Propaganda campaigns have been waged over the course of the last 60 years targeting our amygdala, which is the part of our brain that says, no, this is wrong. And you see this, whether it's like, oh, you have anxiety here. Take these normal pills so you can reduce your anxiety. Just chill out. Hey, sh relax, like literally like soothing a farm animal. And over time, they've shown um, empirically that the average size of the amygdala has shrunk which means our ability to say no and recognize, wait a minute, this is wrong, has literally decreased over time. And specifically, they found that testosterone is correlated positively with the size of your amygdala. I know where you're going with and, this. And conservatives have a larger amygdala than liberals do. So. Well, and, and you know, Ian Smith, uh, um, you know, the, the... I think conservatives need to be forced feminized. I think we've decided that's the solution. What do you guys think? The guy who kept his his uh, gym open in New Jersey, you know, the guy who was arrested, he's a good guy. He's actually coming on the show soon. Um, he had an interesting theory, which maybe a lot of you have heard, but he was saying the reason why they're pushing uh, pornography so strong is because when you have an addictive compulsive behavior, specifically when you are compulsively masturbating, specifically men, and I don't mean just like oh, you look at it and you do it a couple times. We're talking about a lot of men have obsessive compulsive masturbation disorder, which is like they're- Yeah, conservatives do statistically have larger amygdalas. I've read about that. It leads to, there's a correlation between more active amygdalas and propensity for fear, fight or flight responses, stuff like that. Uh, Von Tuck says, oh, oh, whoa, forgot John was 21. How I would love to see the sad, bitter, drunk, he'll be by 40. <laughs> they are ejaculating eight, nine, ten times a day to pornography. They're eight, nine, ten. That's pretty good. You gotta be, you gotta be shooting blanks by number five, right? Looking at it in the morning at work. It's a huge problem in the country of lost work time because people are br browsing adult material at work. And so what he said is the reason why they've normalized sex work and the con sexual confusion, the pornography is because sexual confusion through pornography. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm watching pornography, I'm not sexually confused. I'm sexually aroused. <laughs> These are different words. Sky Comet Fallen says the amygdala is the basis of animal fear and rage, not rationality. I do have a degree in psychology and minor in neuroscience. Thanks, Sky Comet Fallen. The constant release of, of ejaculate during masturbation actually lowers over time yes. your testosterone levels, yep. which is directly related in that part of your brain, which makes you more submissive as a man. I don't think any of that's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a hormone person. I take hormones, but I'm not a hormone person. But I'm like 90% sure that's just bullshit. That feels a lot like uh, the soy is making, making people gay. It feels like that kind of pseudo-scientific nonsense. <laughs> and so the more that- Fellas, is it gay to come? They can get people, men- Nick says, uh, I think your Eliza Schaefer is bleeding into your Elliot Hulse. <laughs> Hooked and on on and addicted to masturbation. The more they can get men addicted to pornography, the more they can get men, as he calls it, releasing the seed. The more that you, the man will be. Cool cat says, I don't use work time on porn. I spend most of it here. You can jerk off to both though. Submissive and to who? Well, I'm joking. Please don't. <laughs> well, obviously to to feminism to women. And There's a whole hot tub section now on Twitch for that. And also to the government and it weakens them and the government just by puff, pushing and proliferating pornography to access points that that is can take out 60 70 percent of the men that could resist them just by proliferating pornography they Literally. can take them out and they've done that and i, I this their obsession with porn is so weird two man 642 says but hannah i need to give myself blue balls to own the libs 
And Nick says, might want to tell that to Danny Sume. <laughs> Interesting theory, and it doesn't seem to be able to be combated with any real evidence. Do you mind if I plug myself? Go ahead. I have a two-hour anti-pornography dissertation on my channel. That we watched it. It was bad. Covers all of that, plus more. You should definitely watch it if you are a young man. We all know what you've been up to, big guy. You better just watch the video. <laughs> Swallow your pride, watch the video. But it's true. It's like it literally, it is the only drug, which it is a drug, that chemically rewires your brain. And it... it Pornography isn't a drug. It doesn't... Does he think, like, heroin and methamphetamine don't affect your brain? I'm... I'm so confused by so many statements he has. Solidifies the same neural pathways that you see if you are a habitual cocaine user, even methamphetamine user. Like, the brain scans are one-to-one. -one. They're identical. What if I masturbate well on cocaine? Is it like double jeopardy? Does it cancel out? And like you said, it lowers testosterone. It makes you depressed because your dopamine receptors are totally fried. So even in your day-to-day -day life, things that used to bring you pleasure, whether it's, you know, driving with the windows down, you know, going out for a while. You know, I find that interesting, actually, because he claims that there's a correlation between masturbating more and lower testosterone. Here's my anecdotal... Here's my anecdotal experience with that, considering I've, I, I, I used to, you know, have a uh, typical male um, hormone comp composites, because I, I know this for a fact. I had hormone uh, tests done before I got on the hormones I'm currently on. I'm currently and have been on T blockers and estrogen for over a year now. I don't even know exactly when I started. Anyway, uh, when I wasn't on T-blockers and I had uh, normal male levels of hormones, I, uh, hmm, I masturbated a lot more. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Not that I never do now. It's just a much more occasional thing. So my personal experience is the opposite of that. When I had high testosterone levels or higher, relatively speaking, I would be masturbating on a much more regular basis. Whereas now, when I'm on hormones with lower T, I do it less. That doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it when I do it. I certainly do, and, and, and you know, whatever. But it's just, it's a less frequent thing. I don't know. This guy comment Fallen says, Evolutionarily, or Evolutionary psychologists found that humanity as a whole has, over the last 10,000 years, been evolving brains that are more empathetic and gentle and less aggressive. I hope so walk in the sun i hope we survive to make use of them <laughs> makes you feel like this numb zombie and then you see you seek that more frequently to try and like chase that initial spike and it depresses you and it's so demoralizing especially because if you look at the most popular types of pornography that are being pushed now it's all like stepdad stepsister it's like it's, porn it is john how would you know that if you didn't unless you went to Pornhub regularly How do you know that, John? John, how do you know that? Sexualizing the family unit. Why? And that's actually untrue. If you go to, um... <laughs> how do I put this? Um, those videos tend to be in the section that's sorted by, like, stuff that's popular that day. But if you go and look at, like, the featured page that's curated by the, the people who curate Pornhub... It's not that stuff. It's mostly, you know, normal, relatively normal porn. Um, that said, I don't, you know, I, I feel like most people, maybe I'm wrong on this one, but if I'm going to like someplace like Pornhub, um, probably gonna, gonna specifically look for things that I know I want to see. I'm not just going to click on front page videos, but you know, John, John, John's a risk taker. He sees uh, a woman uh, uh, trapped in a dryer, uh, who, who, and, and, and he's like, yep, I'm gonna click on that video. Uh, Tyron says, John has, a uh, finger on the pulse of the community. <laughs> Why are they doing that? The most sacred building block of Western civilization they are trying to sexualize and pervert. Why? 
because that, that's the ultimate tearing down the family is how you tear down a country. Once it. the family is so destroyed. True. In the annals of history, I want to read. <laughs> and thus the American empire was destroyed by step-sibling incest porn. <laughs> The, the country is gone. And that's why that's why Christianity is attacked because it keeps families independent. What? Morak says normal porn is so uninteresting. Give me orc girls. You have such a thing for orc girls. Because you have a moral code by God. That's why they attack marriage. That's why they push it further and further away. When you have kids, it creates responsibility. It creates maturity in, in the parents. I mean, there's so much here. But this is why I always say to the atheist people who watch this, they get mad whenever I bring up God, but I have to bring it up. It's not because people are just apes floating around with molecules <laughs> that they want to do this. It's because it's designed by the devil who wants to destroy people and a free Christian nation that liberates people. And they, that's why they call it, they're against colonization is because what they were really mad about was missionaries going into other countries and bringing the Christian faith. That's Yeah, that's not great. You probably shouldn't do that. Nick says, ah, yes, the people wanting gay marriage to be legal hate marriage. Why even today they talk about these schools and the and the cultural genocide of the natives in Canada. Not just cultural, also literal. Because they're really attacking this idea. H. Baird says, you laugh, but future historians will probably say it was Facebook that destroyed American society. Lily Lovestuff says, incest porn has been a thing for hundreds of, year, hundreds of years. These people are just showing their lack of knowledge about their precious Western civilization. Yeah, of missionaries and bringing the gospel to people and civilizing people through finding out that we were not made to be atheistic animals, that we shouldn't just be wild, but we should we are made to be in the image of God. Oh, fucking yikes. You know, I think... He has a very antiquated view of <laughs> other countries. Oh, no. With my um, laryngitis here. Sorry, everybody. You could whisper, too, if you want. I got to skip laryngitis, guy. I'm sorry. Stop or my foreign entities and Tucker Carlson was talking to the president of El Salvador a couple months ago, right? So that's how they get away with taking all of the communications that Tucker Carlson had with, you know, the El Salvadorian, El Salvadorian president or what. This guy comment fallen says, Lot and his two daughters that uh, R worded him, Abraham and his sister wife, or what about uh, R-A-P-E, your cousin and fight over who marries her? Biblical family values not and uh yeah i don't know i mean our intelligence agencies are so corrupt this isn't the first time we've seen this it's not going to be the last time we've seen it and like we continue to talk about why is no one ever held accountable why is this something that americans just sit down and continue to take and never push back on we we see it all happen time and time again and we're all okay with it and it continues to happen again and again right well, you know, I was going to say, rather than it just being a new administration coming in and changing it, definitely if Christians would rise up and pray for this, because this is definitely something that we need to see if this. If God wanted to help you, he would help you. Why would you need to ask? This is really going on and it looks like, you know, these things might be going on. Um, it's like, Lord, please help our country to not just fall. Help but, it be, but, it, but it is going on. You know, I was talking. Nick says, yes, Christians, rise up and pray and do nothing else. We had Darren Beatty on a show uh, recently. You can watch that with John. He's somebody uh, that I didn't realize that that it was the same person that I follow on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, but I was talking to him that it's, it's interesting, though, and the reason why this stuff c continues and proliferates, this is going to be a jab at a lot of people. But uh, as Savannah's told me, don't drop names. Just be a, just be a nice person in, in this. Be a is, good boy. So what's funny is, is that since January 6th, I have been claiming that the not only me, but also uh, um, like Taylor Hansen, a lot of people have have been having problems, right? Even Nick Fuentes got banned from from flying. <laughs> yeah, being a terrorist will do that. And uh, Taylor Hansen got banned from owning firearms. Taylor Hansen was working for the Gateway Pundit. Uh, Nick was I would imagine that's because of a felony charge of some sort. Even I don't know how else that would happen. In the building, I am a federally credentialed reporter being harassed on the request of a sitting congressman. We've been, uh, a lot of people have been complaining, right? So what happens is if someone like Nick Fuentes complains about um, getting put on the no-fly list, which is a valid complaint because he never went in the building, and also about the way that they've basically frozen his money, if you don't realize. Yeah, he's under investigation for receiving like $50,000 in Bitcoin from like a foreign entity to help fund January 6th. That's that's receiving money from a foreign entity in order to stoke a, 
act of terrorism. He's lucky he's not in jail right now. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Nick says, so does this guy want people convicted of domestic violence to have firearms? I guess. Realize they've frozen massive amounts of money in his bank accounts um, for political targeting. But of course, well, everyone knows this guy, which I'm not, you don't think you're familiar with, with Nick Fuentes, is that uh, he's like the boogeyman on the right that True. nobody wants to say his name because literally they're afraid to say He's a neo-Nazi. Say his name. He's a Holocaust denying neo-Nazi. You shouldn't like Nick Fuentes. John Doyle does, though. I've seen him hang out. They were at the Michigan um, uh, Capitol in Lansing hanging out together at a Trump rally a while back. Because they, his brand is radioactive. It is super radioactive. So what happens is somebody like that gets hit right by the feds and everyone's like, oh, that's not good. But, oh, it's Nick. And he's made uh, jokes about the Holocaust. So he, he didn't make a joke about the Holocaust. He humorously uh, let slip the fact that he doesn't believe the Holocaust happened. He, and he says, you know, he says the N-word and he's called people, you know, the maggot. The thing that runs with maggot and he says Jew stuff. So... Oh, he's really trying to underplay the whole neo-Nazi thing. Oh, you know, he just says, quote, Jew stuff. Are you listening to yourself? Really? I can't. You can't really underplay. You can't. You can't downplay that. You can't. You just sound so much worse. Defend him because even though he's an American citizen, his uh, his brand is not aligned with my brand. This is where we this is why the right loses. Ready? <laughs> The right loses because we aren't more buddy buddy with neo Nazis. Oh boy. And it goes a step further, and it's like, oh, Taylor Hansen got, uh, you know, the guy who filmed Ashley Babbitt getting shot, the guy who's the reason why we know the officer, Mike Bird, that killed Ashley Babbitt. The reason why we know that is because of Taylor Hansen did a service for America where the government hid and committed a murder in the White House. Oh, get fucked. First of all, Congress, not the White House, you dumb asshole. Second of all, she got shot because she was... you. I, I can't show it on Twitch because she gets shot and dies. Um, but literally, the, the window and doors have been locked and barricaded by the police because there are Congress people on the other side at the end of a hallway. The mob uh, is up against the door. They smash a window. Ashley Babbitt climbs up and starts going through the window. The officer verbally warns her to get back. She doesn't. She starts stepping through the window, and he shoots her, and she fucking dies. And I am the last person to justify police violence, but she absolutely had it coming. She was committing an act of terrorism and threatening United States Congress people in order to undermine democracy. If anyone in the world has ever deserved to be shot by a cop, it was Ashley fucking Babbitt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And in the Capitol building, they go, oh, well, Taylor Hansen's not federally credentialed. So, so, so it's like, oh, well, and he's not, he doesn't have a big, big... Nick says, uh, did you see Kmart and Sears had Ashley Babbitt shirts on sale before they took them down? I did. It was gross. Enough following, so we're not going to defend him. Then it's like, then it goes a step further and it goes to me and it's like, oh, um, I, this is what happened to me when the feds got on me. A bunch of people pulled back and distanced themselves. And I'm like, guys, the law's on my side. I'm going to win this. While well, people were harassing me, you know, stealing my advertisers, going into my DMs, harassing me, telling me I'm going to go to prison. While well, people, a sitting congressman was sticking the FBI on me. Um... Maybe don't be a shithead that breaks into Congress. That'd be cool. When I have the credentials to do what I did, they're like, oh, what? I don't want to get involved in an open. I believe Baked Alaska is still imprisoned awaiting trial. Yes. Lawsuit because it, it, it's not going to help my brand. And then suddenly it happens to the biggest commentator, not just on the right, the biggest journalist in media at, at, at all, Tucker Carlson. And then everyone's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're doing this to the right wing media because it helps their brand. Stop breaking the law to like come to Tucker's aid and it's like okay now because it's brand safe Tucker. It's like, dude, you guys lose because you let the enemy get up to a point to where you no longer can do anything so and true. you're losers and you're grifting even off of Tucker being spied on. We are real people. Tucker's a man. He doesn't even go on social media. He has a family. He's a man and he's just like you. And if you think that it's like this hierarchy, no, if it happens to anyone, it can happen to actually everyone. Right. And it goes so to true. Tucker and the right's like, 
how do we get here? And it's like, because you only cared when it affected Tucker, because you all just want to go on Tucker's show and look like you're defending Fox, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And it's like, I'm sorry, not only did Snowden warn you about this for like over a decade, but also since January 6th, this has been happening at such extreme levels. And this is the blaze. Like this is the, this is the largest online conservative network and a, there were credential reporters telling the public this is happening. Is the blaze bigger than like One America News or Newsmax? That's surprising. I know it's been around longer, but I never hear right when you're talking about the blaze. And no mainstream outlet has ever asked me or picked up the story except for OAN. OAN and Tim Pool picked up the story and have, have put it out there, but nobody else, not even Fox, has been like... And Tim Pool has peak journalistic standards, okay? And now Fox is a victim. Do you, do you yeah. know what, real fast? Um, the targeting of conservatives, and, and of course we read that if we have you know, conservative news apps and things like that. But of course, the other news agencies don't show that kind of stuff. And so there's, when you talk to people, they'll say, do you really believe that? And they'll say it kind of as a- Again, as a, I gotta skip to voice guy. Too, I'm like, sorry, somebody I wouldn't normally, but I can't stand it. Like they, they won't take a position uh, when men are identifying as women because hey, it doesn't affect me or I don't- Correct. I don't care what people do in the privacy of their own home, but then all of a sudden their daughters are getting schooled by the boys in, in transgender athletics, and then they want to throw a fit. And Again, a thing that doesn't happen to the vast majority of people. Nick says, Tim Poole, the guy who made an, uh, uh, he, why do you guys give me these? I think I've, I've mispronounced this before. It's a hentai word that I don't know. The guy who made an ahegao video about January 6th. And it's like they, they refuse to take action at every step leading up to when it immediately affects them. And then they want a virtue signal and throw a big fit. Like, well, I can't believe. Well, they've lost their damn minds this time. But it's like, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You will do nothing. That's why the, the big fantasy is always the Second Amendment, the last chance for a disobedient population. It's like the Second <laughs> Amendment is a cope. You won't do anything. And you know that. That's why it exists. Because if they like actually took your guns away, then maybe you'd be like, oh, it's real. But no, they needed you to have that just in your mind. Like, well, one of these days, I'm going to I'm going to fight back and take my country back. And no, no, you're, you're going to get my Glock 19 and I'm gonna, take I'm down gonna, a yeah. predator, a predator drone. I'm going to. John, you're a gun fetishist. You literally have a gun on the set of your show. <laughs> and now you're making fun of this sort of gun culture? Weird. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of the lazy boy. I'm gonna put down the Mountain Dew. Yeah, the big I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close my laptop. I'll, I'll get back to my black.com video in a second and I'm gonna clear my <laughs> suburb. That's another very specific porn reference he just made. John, you're looking at porn, clearly. <laughs> very specific racially ra ra racially specific fetish porn <laughs> that makes too much sense that's so on the nose if that's what john is into isn't that way too on the nose like even i wouldn't make that joke because i'm like that's too obvious as a joke i whatever from the atf no the door is gonna get kicked in and some 23 year old kid is gonna collapse your skull like a watermelon with an m4 and <laughs> you're just not you know what john, i, I want to say something on that john <laughs> it's really gonna be your generation that's gonna rise up at this time what do you mean, it's, rise it's up? your generation that's gonna rise up either for finding god or it's your generation that's going to save our country and, and it really Christ. isn't my generation it really is going to be those in their 20s and their 30s that are awake to all of this and trying to figure out ways to maneuver through whether one speedy yoshi thanks for subscribing for five months says yay five months i love how these people try to both say trans people are such a small minority why do we have to change anything for them and also trans people are dominating in sports and there's tons of them in bathrooms i know it's not consistent whether, of course, it be through voting or whether it be through media. or Yeah, luckily the stats do show Gen Z is the most progressive generation yet, as is typical of sort of American, you know, political shifts over the last century or and a half or so. I'm really, really hoping John Doyle is an outlier here, because boy, is he a piece of shit. A generation of John Doyles, I think, would uh, just completely undo me. Whether it be through overturning certain media things um there's got to be a way 
Do I have any Zoomers in my audience? Is it mostly Millennials and Gen Xers? I genuinely don't know. I haven't looked at my stats broken down by age. Do I have any Zoomers here? Can you enlighten me as to sort of like... What, 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 what are Zoomers like? Like, would most Zoomers look at John and be like, what a fucking weirdo? Just curious. Way, but, but your generation is going to be creative and they're right. the ones that are going to bring the change and as more and more young people because a lot of the young people are just busy going to school and busy just trying to work and stuff too and so they're not overly thinking of these okay here's a poll but only if you're a gen z person answer this poll please i appreciate it why won't it work there we go If you're a Zoomer, answer this poll, please. Thanks. Uh, if you're like, yeah, if you're under 24, you're, you're a Zoomer. But there are those that are considerate and are really feeling a conscience-strickenness about all that's going on. And so, man, we've got to see that this generation rise up to bring right. about change. Yeah, and this is true, and this is why Darren Beatty, who's... Uh, which, by the way, I love how they try to call him a white nationalist, even though he's a Jew. Yeah, I know. Can we get over this? Can we... Can we... Fun fact, there were actually uh, Jewish supporters of the Nazi party uh, right up until the Night of Long Knives and other uh, Savannah, can you go? <laughs> other purges like that. There were also a few gay Nazis. That didn't last long. On the screen here, can we start like people are like, oh, John Miller is a white nationalist. John Miller is black. He's literally black. It's inherently impossible to believe in it. That would be then he would if he was a white nationalist, he would have committed suicide. True. OK, so <laughs> not necessarily uh, white nationalism doesn't always inherently mean you only want white people in your nation. It means you want it can also mean rather that you want white people to be hierarchically, systemically and maybe even legally more powerful and have more agency than other races in a group. Because just logistically, it doesn't... What are you going to... You're, you're either going to be full-on Nazi and want to Holocaust, you know, genocide people. Um, or you're going to want to, like, ship people out to some other place. Neither is really tenable. So a lot of white nationalism can show itself in... Not necessarily wanting to dispose of people of different races, but just lord power over them. And he's not suicidal. And neither is... They always do this. They start calling, you know, like, Jews white supremacists. It's like, inherently, they're not, okay? Inherently, you're not, you're not, you're not that. But Darren Beatty, who, who was crapped on the reason why... says, the I have three siblings who are Zoomers, and they're all pretty left-leaning, except for my sister, who's left-leaning, but because she lives in... Uh, Antrim County, Michigan, she can only find white Republicans who are okay with her being half black to date. Oh, yikes. They're coming after. Uh, so far, the poll is 96% no, 4% uh, yes, with one vote. After him, it's because he's finding out real information. Yes. His website, which I encourage people to start visiting, revolver.news, is an amazing one of our last stands. He actually, and this is a lot of information. Revolver.news? How bad is this? Revolver.news. <sighs> Did cops attack and provoke peaceful protesters on January 6th? Oh, God. There's not even images. This is really bad. Information that's come out has been instrumental in realizing something that I also have found out through multiple investigations and through talking to people is that the FBI, and I will say this, allegedly, because it's always allegedly with the government, because you'll never go to the court of the government to prove it. They planned the they planned the Capitol riot. Um, <laughs> the no, no, they didn't. 
here's this video. He makes that false statement at 29 minutes and 22 seconds. Which could be considered misleading or spam, maybe, to some people. Just a non-sequitur. Don't know why I'd bring that up. The people that were instrumental that are being arrested for the main organizers, the people who premeditated this, this violence, are being protected by the government as informants. They were informants, and the, and the FBI admitted in their official documentation that they were informants. So they were working with the FBI. The FBI knew about their plans to attack, and the FBI let it happen, which is, means the FBI is an accomplice to what happened, which is enough to say they, they share blame. If, I, if I'm with you and I let you carry out a murder and I have foreknowledge and I don't alert anybody, I can be prosecuted for not for, for being a part of that, talking to you about a crime that you're going to commit, and then letting you commit it to be accomplished to the crime. If you murdered somebody, that would be the crime. Well. It just comes out now, uh, Darren Beatty here, front page, federal protection of Oath Keepers. I'm sure you hear about them. They say, how oh, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, the 3% white supremacists, whatever they call them these days. Uh, the kingpin, Stuart Rhodes, breaks the entire Capitol insurrection lie wide open. Check this out. This is pretty crazy. This is at, uh, he says, Republicans, you can crack open the entire store January 6th. I'm going to go down here. Stuart Rhodes is the founder, boss, and kingpin of the Oath Keepers. I'm sure you've heard of the militia, the Oath Keepers. Um, I don't know if they call themselves militia, but that's what the government's calling them now. And so let's just listen to the government. Oh, yeah. He called it a tour earlier, and now he's talking about it as a riot, an attack. Can't even stay consistent in one video. Boys. Yeah. Uh, can I can I make that quote that um, that's Flecka's in his recent video from Pride, if you haven't watched it, ask someone why they got the vaccine. They said the government said it was safe. And why wouldn't you do what the government says? Because the government's trying to keep us safe. And I went, I believe everything the government tells me. Me, too. <laughs> but he says the Oath Keepers, we were told the America's largest militia, the most prominent anti-government group in the United States, and the preeminent right-wing domestic extremist insider threat to the entire U.S. military. I love his writing. Whatever the truth of these hyperbolic claims, the fact remains that the Oath Keepers are the most extensively prosecuted paramilitary group alleged to be involved in 1-6. I guess you shouldn't break the law then. Aren't you the party of law and order? Isn't that what Trump said? Don't break the law then, you dumb assholes. Indeed, it was the alleged pre-planned assault, in quotes, on the Capitol by Stewart's Rhodes' alleged Oath Keeper lieutenants that was used as the key talking point to try to convert the day's events from a protest into an insurrection. So for those who are who are like my level IQ and not John's, what he's trying to say is, is that if we need to find out if it was an insurrection on January 6th or not. That's important. They have tribunals. They're having, they're starting to have investigatory groups. So let's ask the question, was it an insurrection? So you'd have to know an insurrection if it was a, an attempted or a carried out violent overthrow of the government. It was an attempt. It was a shitty attempt. But it was an attempt nonetheless. So you'd have to know if, if I'm incompetent and I try and commit a murder and it's the craziest comedy of errors, stupid plan to commit a murder. That's still attempted murder. They wanted to break into the Capitol, did break into the Capitol, attacked police, stole shit, smeared shit on the walls and attempted to threaten and scare Congress into not accepting that Joe Biden won the election and to install Trump as the president even though he lost. By definition, that's an insurrection. This is really what happened. We gotta answer this question. So let's go to the main group that is being accused of planning this, the Oath Keepers, and let's go to the head of that. The gallows thing bothers me, guys. I do, okay, hold on. Every time this comes up and people are like, they brought gallows. They were building gallows. Okay. Did, have you seen the picture of the fucking thing that's referenced in that case? It's this. It's clearly symbolic. There's not even a way for this to function as an actual gallows. I've seen similar things. Um, uh, leftists doing a guillotine. I'm spelling that wrong. Uh, in front of house. I forget whose house this was. People have also protested things by building guillotines in front of wealthy people's house. I don't think these people literally were going to murder this rich person any more than this is necessarily a real gallows. If you go for the gallows thing, I think you look dumb. I think you make... It's a bad argument considering the fact that there are so many other things to talk about in regard to January 6th.
they legitimately did try and succeeded in invading Congress, killing a police officer, attacking many others, and trying to overturn democracy. That's bad enough. You don't have to make shit up. This is a weird protest symbolic thing, just like this is. Don't use bad arguments when there are good arguments there for you to use. It undermines the good arguments. That group. This Nick says the people putting up the gallows in front of the Capitol actually want to murder Congress, though, compared to protesters with guillotines. You don't think those protesters with guillotines want to kill Jeff Bezos? I'm not saying they're going to attempt to do it, but they probably also don't like them. And you don't even know if the person who did the gallows are one of the people who actually broke into the Capitol. I'm just saying, use the stuff that's a good argument. I don't think the gallows thing is. Um, Lil Moni, thank you for subscribing for two months. Or is that Lil Moni? I'm not sure. Lil Moni. Guy. Well, Stuart Rhodes is not simply a key figure in the Oath Keepers. He is, according to the Oath Keepers board member, uh, you know, he is the Oath Keepers. And it turns out as we Yeah, you could use the chance of hang Mike Pence or whatever. That's fine. I think the gallows is a stupid thing because the second you bring it up, they're going to point to it and go, that's not a functional gallows, which it isn't. There are other things to focus on. I'm, I'm telling you the pragmatic argument here. I'm not telling you whether you're right or wrong. I'm telling you, if you're in a discussion about this, you need to choose what you focus on very carefully as to not undermine your own arguments. As we get into this, that he was working with the FBI and they knew about this. You can get into the whole article, but it's like the main minds behind the insurrection was the government and, and here. No, no, it wasn't. Actually, you know what? Trump at that point technically was the government. He was the president. So if you want to blame Donald Trump, fine. He had a part in it, but not the FBI. Apparently, then the, gov the FBI should be the one blamed for the insurrection. My point is, is that the government didn't try to overthrow itself, which is why these people were not heavily armed, which is why they were never going to carry this out, which is why, as the New York Times released, damning evidence on behalf of Joanne Donovan, our favorite butch lesbian professor, who blamed me, by the way, and Andy No for causing the riots with our footage, just to clarify, Harvard, with a peer-reviewed journal, said that the videos from me and Andy No are what gaslit America into more rioting. Not the rioters, never blame black people for BLM, don't blame white people from Antifa, let's just blame the people filming them, as always. But the point of the matter is, is that summing this down, what, it is what we are finding out by the name, by their own documents, is that the FBI played a role in this, which is why, like I said, Joanne Donovan released information from, with the New York Times saying that the National Guard was stationed 20 minutes away from the Capitol and they were denied access to prevent the insurrection. By Trump! Trump was the one who said no! This has been reported on months ago. ...for three hours. They were not allowed onto the scene until the entire until the entire certification had been stopped, until they, the people had broken in and the certification had been stopped, which is where they can claim insurrection, they had to wait till the certification had been stopped, and then the National Guard came in. Yeah, you and I actually made a prediction about six months ago on the first podcast that we did together that, that was pretty similar to what ended up happening. Uh, and it's like, they, they just walked right into it because they're so stupid. It's like, the entire right, I would say, predominantly masturbates to this misunderstanding of the founding fathers and what they wanted this country to be and what it actually is. And so, you know, they're going to walk into the building like, yeah, you know, we're patriots, we're making our stand. But it's like, what did, what did you do? You took some silly pictures and then you poked the bear and now you're getting your- Killed the guy teeth kicked in now you're in 23 hour lockdown you can't make phone calls and we're all going to be screwed over for the next few decades this is going to be written about in the history books and like there are legitimately people out there there are tens of millions of people out there who think that there was an armed insurrection and that there were people trying yeah yep to legitimately overthrow the government analogously to you know uh hitler and the nazis in, in 1920s germany it's just like it's it's such a it, I think it's probably more akin to some of the other rebellion type things that have happened in America's history. Uh, I get the connection to Nazism considering a lot of them are fascists, but I'd consider it more akin to some of the other smaller uprisings that have happened in American history. Extreme level of cognitive dissonance that we don't have a solution. I feel like the Nazis were more competent is what I'm trying to say here. Nazis are evil. 
But at the very least, they successfully took over the government. The MAGA people couldn't even do that. So... ...to because we have no institutional power to disseminate that truth to the masses. So because we don't control that, they can point the finger at us for literally... They could just make stuff because up. Because the intelligence community controls the media outlets. Do you not know why everybody is... <laughs> We're just talking. We're just making shit up now. Cool. Former CIA, former FBI. I like how CNN was like, CNN did this. They were like, and to prove that the FBI had no role inside of the insurrection, yeah. we brought on former FBI director to tell us. It's like, <laughs> to tell, <laughs> it's like, it's like. It's, it's like how the NSA just came out and was like, we were spying on Tucker Carlson. Yeah, no, yeah. It's absolutely like this, not. To tell you that homosexuality is not a sin in the Bible, we're bringing on this lesbian pastor <laughs> who will tell you uh, how you're going to go to heaven even if you practice lesbianism. It's like. I don't practice lesbianism. I'm an expert. It's not exactly the right source for the objective. Uh, it's like, <laughs> you're kind of using the exact problem and that's what they did. You know, I was thinking about that particular day it was also, it was a rap. Oh, raspy and guy. When we dream of that, be standing in from this general government has written, um, and it, because, because watch this. So obviously we know the truth. Gotta practice to become an expert. Truth, but since the government has gone rogue, they're like you said, they're going to rewrite history. They're going. This is going to be the worst thing that ever happened. The NSA never spied on us. Like they said, it's illegal to. It's illegal to even question that. The insurrection was the most dangerous. No, it's not. White supremacist uprising in the mayor. You're wrong, but <laughs> you can question it. American history more dangerous. Actually, I was saying this. I want to go Star Wars level. I think that was the worst event in the intergalactic empire. Like I, think, I agree, the worst event. Yeah. Fictitious or not? Like yes, it's, it's ever been written about. It was that worse. Is the worst thing it was that worse than when the Death Star blew up. Yeah. I... Do you think the Death Star blowing up was a? The Empire are the bad guys. You're supposed to when the Death Star blows up to be like, yay! You're not supposed to see that as a bad thing. Did? Did he? I can't tell if he's just bad at metaphors or if he cheers for the bad guys in Star Wars who are Nazi coded. They're stormtroopers. I agree. I think this was worse than the blowing up the Death Star. Honestly speaking. Oh, he said it twice. He didn't. Okay, great. Speaking because him how many innocent people were forced to work on the Death Star, but their lives are still. Oh, no, he's legit. Okay, he's legitimately. less valuable of course than the zero amount of police officers who were killed that day uh that oh except for the one that died for sure being said um the government is is denying the truth and you can see this smug i would say it's the spirit of the antichrist let's play this video from jen Psaki, who this new narrative is the left is just rewriting history saying actually we're not the ones who defunded the police I mean, we didn't we're not the ones who are fighting for this more important than words are they done yet? I'm very over them. This national pride minus efficiency plus drag queen story hour. Like, God, they love to talk about that shit. Like, that's where we're at. Speedy Yoshi says he's trying to do the clerks bit, but they specifically go with Return of the Jedi when it was just contractors. Yeah. And minus the military. Don't forget about that. Yeah. In the first Star Wars movie, the Death Star was completed. So it was people from the Empire. It was stormtroopers and... Um, imperial officers and stuff. Yeah, minus people who actually want to join the military. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yep. He sodomized to death. And wait, what? Um, but at the same time, it's like again humiliation. Yep. He sodomized to death, and now it's literally the U.S. uses <laughs> Libya as the, to funnel a lot of money. It's used for money laundering and as well. Continue to keep it. Okay, I think that's probably enough. Slightly offensive for today. It's a lot. It's a lot. Nick says, John Doyle blaming Drag Queen Story Hour sounds kind of like Hitler blaming the Jews. I don't know if I'd go that far. But it is a weird talking point they bring up all the time. At this point, most of the time I hear about drag queens at all is when right-wingers are complaining about Drag Queen Story Hour. It's very strange.
This is the lawsuit that Donald Trump... <laughs> oh, God, look at how they filed this. This is hilarious. One Speedy Yoshi says, A conservative 16-year-old spammed this to everyone in Discord server. What do you think of it? Um. Oh, the fire extinguisher thing? Yeah, I, I guess he didn't get hit with a fucking fire extinguisher or something. I don't know the specifics. Um, so this is the lawsuit that Donald Trump filed against Facebook. Um, <laughs> and look at how they filed this. <sighs> Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States. You could have just said Donald Trump. Elizabeth Albert Kenyon and Bobby Michael and Jennifer Horton individually and, be and on behalf of the class versus Facebook Inc. and Mark Zuckerberg. It was a different cop that got beat with the fire extinguisher than the one that died. My bad. Complaint for injunctive and declaratory relief. One, plaintiff Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States, individually and on behalf of those similarly situated punitive class members, by and through the undersigned counsel, bring this action against defendant Facebook Inc., Facebook, and its chief executive officer, defendant Mark Zuckerberg, individually. The allegations herein of the plaintiff and punitive class members are based upon personal knowledge and belief as to their... Excuse me own acts and upon the investigation of their counsel and upon information and belief as to all other matters. As stated in its community standards, defendant Facebook promotes itself as a service for people to talk openly about the issues that matter to them, even if some may disagree or find them objectionable. Defendant Facebook's power and influence are immense. It currently boasts close to 3 billion registered users worldwide and 124 million users in the United States. Defendant Facebook had 86 billion in total revenue for a net profit margin of 33% in the fiscal year 2020. Defendant Facebook has increasingly engaged in impermissible censorship results from the threatening, uh, from threatened legislative action, a misguided reliance upon Section 230 of the Communications Act, and a willful participation in joint activity with federal actors. Defendant Facebook's status thus rises beyond that of a private company to that of a state actor. As such, defendant is constrained by the First Amendment right to free speech and the censorship decisions it makes regarding users. Oh, no! This is the dumbest way they could have tried to do this lawsuit. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So they're trying to claim because of some alleged participation in joint activity with federal actors... I don't know what specifically they mean by that. They probably go into more detail later in the thing. Are claiming that as such, Facebook no longer is a private entity legally, but instead should be considered a government actor, thus saying that Facebook is not a private company, but in fact an arm of the government. It's dead. It's dead on arrival. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You can't do that. This is the... <laughs> this is a kind of a similar argument. Um, Kent Hoven tried to claim in his lawsuits to the federal government that got dismissed as well. He tried to claim... Um, he tried to claim that collecting taxes on behalf of the federal government for his employees makes him a government actor and is therefore a form of slavery. It's a little different, but it's interesting the sort of tangential way in which they're trying to turn non-government entities into government entities to try and make the First Amendment apply. Very weird. When Speedy Yoshi says, how would it, amazing would it be if Dominion sued Trump? That'd be nice. Anyway, legislation passed 25 years ago intended to protect minors from the transmission of obscene materials on the internet and to protect the growth and development of social media companies has enabled defendant Facebook to grow into a commercial giant that now censors, flags, removes, shadow bans, etc. and otherwise restricts with impunity the constitutionally protected free speech of the plaintiff and the punitive class members. Again, this is entirely 
dependent upon the court viewing Facebook as a governmental entity, which they are not going to do. The immediacy of defendants' threats to its users and potentially every citizen's right to free speech cannot be overstated. Defendants' callous disregard of its users' constitutional rights is no better exemplified than the matter currently before the court. January 7th, 2021, defendants indefinitely banned the sitting president of the United States he, what, uh, for exercising his constitutional right for free speech. Again, it's not a constitutional right in this case. They're a private entity. But I believe it was for spreading election fraud shit, which directly ended up leading to the January 6th insurrection attempt. That's why they banned him. They didn't want him inciting any more violence. Defendants extended their conditional and unconstitutional prior restraint of plaintiff's right to free speech as a private citizen until at least January of 2023. Defendants then served warnings to members of President Trump's family, Team Trump, other Facebook users, and punitive class members that its ban extends to anyone attempting to post Donald J. Trump's voice. Censorship runs rampant against the punitive class members, and the result is a chilling effect cast over our nation's pressing political, medical, social, and cultural discussions. Plaintiff, a sitting president of the United States, was banned by the defendants, as were punitive class members, using non-existent or broad, vague, and ever-shifting standards. While Facebook's ban and prior restraint of plaintiff are well-documented, the untold stories of punitive class members are now stirring the public consciousness. Using unconstitutional authority delegated to them by Congress. Okay, so are they saying... <laughs> okay, so is their argument because Facebook falls under Section 230, they are therefore a government entity because a law applies to them? They're a government entity because there is a law that protects them from liability. Then, then basically every LLC is a government entity because it also shields people legally from liability, and that's set up by governments. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Defendants deplatformed plaintiff at the behest of, with cooperation from, and approval of Democrat lawmakers. Akin to forcing a round peg into a square hole, Facebook declared that specific posts of plaintiff had violated Facebook's self-imposed community standards. Countless other Facebook users have not been as fortunate with Facebook taking detrimental action against their accounts with no explanation whatsoever. If defendants' reliance on an unconstitutional delegation of authority to regulate free speech and under pressure from Congress can effectively censor and impose a prior restraint on the protected political speech of a sitting president of the United States, then the threat to punitive class members, our citizens, and our United States Constitution in form of government is imminent, severe, and irreparable. Uh, Hannah, does your LLC make you a government agent? I guess so. Can I get, like, a pension then? That'd be pretty sweet. Um, plaintiff respectfully asks this court to declare that Section 230 on its face and is an unconstitutional delegation of authority. <laughs> Have they given up on trying to legally get rid of Section 230 via the legislature and now they just want the court to, de to determine that it's unconstitutional? Oh boy. The defendant's actions directed at the plaintiff and the punitive class members are a prior restraint on their First Amendment right to free speech to order the defendants to restore Facebook account of plaintiff as well as those deplatformed punitive class members and to prohibit defendants from exercising censorship, editorial control, or prior restraint in its many forms over the posts of President Trump and punitive class members. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, the serfs. Thank you. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everyone. We're taking a look at the lawsuit that Donald J. Trump, former president, has filed against Facebook. Um, I'm Hannah. I'm a trans leftist streamer. This is Chudwatch. I look at all sorts of right-wing nonsense and sort of make fun of it. This lawsuit is a fucking joke. For those who are just coming in, this lawsuit attempts to claim that because Facebook operates with the protections from Section 230... Therefore, that means that Facebook is de facto a government actor and cannot restrict speech. It's the dumbest lawsuit ever. Make sure, if you haven't, 
Go check out the Surf's TV. Could I get a link in the chat, please, from one of the mods? Go check out Lance over at the Surf's. Really great content. So anyway, continuing. Jurisdiction and venue. This court has jurisdiction over this action pursuant to 28 U.S.C., 1331, 1332, 28 U.S.C., 2201. You get it. This is pretty typical. This is just them. You have to explain when you're filing a lawsuit why the court has jurisdiction and what venue it should be in and why that venue has jurisdiction. I believe um, he's trying to file this in Florida as well, probably because it's a court close to where Trump is currently living, near his golf place. Um, I'm pretty sure I read a while back that Facebook has a clause in their terms of service where you have to file a lawsuit against them in a specific jurisdiction, which is not this jurisdiction, so they already fucked that up. Parties, Donald J. Trump, 45th President of the United States, is a private citizen and is domiciled in Palm Beach, Florida, and we have a list of other plaintiffs. This is their definition of the class, because um, it is a class action lawsuit. All Facebook platform users, punitive class members, who have resided in the United States between June 1st, 2018 and today, and have their Facebook account censored by defendants and were damaged thereby. So the class here in the class action lawsuit is theoretically anyone who has resided in the U.S. between June 1st, 2018 and now, um... And has had their Facebook page banned in some way. And can show damage from that. Good luck. <sighs> Defendant Facebook is a foreign corporation with a principal... Wait, what do you mean... What do you... Wait. What do you mean it's a foreign corporation? Facebook was developed by Mark Zuckerberg in America. What... What do you mean it's a foreign corporation? Defendant Facebook is a foreign corporation with the principal place of business at 1601 Willow Road, Menlo Park, California, and conducts business in the state of Florida. This is them trying to set, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, basically they're trying to show that because they do business in the state of Florida that this Floridian court can hear the case. Oh, is it an update on the Tucker Carlson thing? Uh, Tucker Carlson sought Putin interview at time of spying claim. Gotcha. That's probably why the NSA was looking at his shit, if they were at all. Anyway, uh, they conduct businesses in the state of Florida throughout the United States and internationally. Facebook has 41 offices in the United States and 45 offices located worldwide. Facebook has been registered in Florida as a foreign profit corporation since 2011. Defendant Mark Zuckerberg is the chairman and chief executive officer of Facebook. Zuckerberg owns a controlling interest in Facebook stock and upon information and belief resides in Palo Alto, California. Uh, both Facebook and Twitter TOS says lawsuits have to be filed in certain places. Yeah. They're going to have to refile this in whatever court those things say. I assume Facebook, and I think they did this against Twitter as well, they're going to file responses because you have a certain number of days to respond to a filing like this to get it dismissed or whatever. Um, and I imagine Facebook's going to do that quickly. And it'll probably get thrown out and they'll have to refile. Nick says, foreign profit corporation is not... Uh, a typo for profit holy shit whoever wrote this needs to lose their law license hydrate thank you Baha. okay here's where we get into the statements of fact <clears throat> defendant facebook the United States Supreme Court has recognized that social media platforms such as Facebook provide, quote, perhaps the most powerful mechanism available to a private citizen to make his or her voice heard. Um, and then there's the citation for the case. These platforms have been revolutionary, not least because they have transferred civic engagement by allowing elected officials to communicate instantaneously and directly with their constituents. Facebook enables ordinary citizens to speak directly to public officials and listen to and debate others about public issues in much the same way they could have gathered on a sidewalk or in a public park or a city council meeting or town hall. 
In 2007, Facebook launched the Facebook platform, which has allowed for integration of third-party applications known as apps, and for the website to be integrated in the larger World Wide Web through search engine indexing. Facebook actively encourages users to express their ideas and communicate via its platform in the form of comments and likes on postings. While encouraging extensive user engagement, Facebook also collects massive amounts of its users' data to sell to advertisers. As a social media conglomerate, Facebook allows users to publish personal pages with personal message postings, links to new articles, videos, photographs, and to publicly interact with other users through speech. The speech posted on Facebook pages ranges from users' mundane musings on everyday life to the most important new topics of the day, including political speech. It's like having an alien try and explain what Facebook is to someone. <laughs> um, in accordance with its terms of service, a Facebook user is an individual who is permitted to create an account on its platform in accordance with its terms of service. A user can post on their wall a type of message board, a variety of speech, including their own commentary, videos, photographs, and links to news articles. Other users can view, share, and comment on the content on the user's wall. Users rate other users' content and speech by giving it likes. Users also can send messages directly to each other and are updated by posting within their network of friends by communicating with each other. Users can create valuable communication. We get it. We, we get it. Are you? This is just general facts about Facebook. Hmm. Here's where we're getting to more interesting stuff. Uh, according to them, Facebook engages in targeted censorship decisions by using both algorithms and employees, referred to as content moderators, utilizing an internal tool developed by Facebook called Tasks. Facebook's content moderators use Tasks to entertain censorship suggestions from employees. Facebook content moderators often consult with their peers at other similarly situated social media platforms in deciding who or what to censor. Again, Censorship is such a interesting word here. If you missed it earlier, they are trying to claim that Facebook is a government actor and therefore is bound by the First Amendment. They are not. Facebook and Twitter Incorporated employees often coordinate their censorship efforts, which are authorized and immunized by Section 230. A recent review of domain names on Facebook's task platform referred to Twitter domain names, as well as particular phrases, words, or individuals both Facebook and Twitter were considering censoring or ultimately did censor. Within two minutes of one another, Facebook and Twitter suspended President Trump, Trump, <laughs> President Trump, um, January 7th, 2021. Such simultaneous censorship and its origins are suspicious and worthy of the court's consideration when evaluating the conduct of the defendants. Facebook also has developed a powerful tracking platform, Centra, that allows Facebook to monitor its users' speech and activity, not only on each other's individual users' Facebook page, but also that users' speech and activity on any other social media platform across the entire internet. And and across all of that user's internet connected devices as well. By utilizing, utilizing its Centra tracking platform, Facebook has the ability not only to censor, i.e. flag shadow ban, etc., or otherwise constrain its own Facebook users' constitutionally protected speech, but also potentially to censor Facebook users on other social media platforms. Facebook's TOS contain what is referred to as its community standards, and states, These guidelines outline our standards regarding the content you post to Facebook and your other Facebook products. So basically, they're, they're just, they're mad. They're mad that Donald Trump got banned for being a piece of shit and breaking TOS. Ah, plaintiff's use of Facebook's platform, the Donald J. Trump Facebook account. Plaintiff established his Facebook account in May of 2009 and used the account for several years to engage with his followers about politics, celebrities, golf, and his business interests, among other topics. After he announced his campaign for the presidential nomination of the Republican Party, Plaintiff used his Facebook account to speak directly to his followers and the public at large. By using social media, including Facebook, President Trump strategically circumvented what he saw as mainstream media that was biased against him. Oh, uh, they were so biased, he ran every, they ran every single one of his rants alleys someone says what the fuck and there's a post what's this oh it's like a minion <laughs> uh 
A complaint filed by the family's lawyers in Connecticut Superior Court says there's no possible reasonable explanation for this conduct. One of the images appears to depict a minion illustrated as a filet mignon with the caption filet minion. <laughs> what? Lawyer for Sandy Hook families say Remington, the manufacturer of the AR-15 style rifle used in the 2012 school shooting, included in its documents tens of thousands of irrelevant images, some of which are random cartoons. Why? Are they just trying- I'm pretty sure it's illegal, or at least against court procedure, to throw in a bunch of random crap to make discovery harder. One sec. <clears throat> I gotta drink my water. I'm slapping my lips. Sorry. Google Rule 11, which this is a clear violation of. I believe you. After his inauguration as president in January of 2017, Plaintiff's Facebook account became an instrument of his presidency. By virtue of the way he used his account, Plaintiff's messages became an important source of news and information about the government, as did his followers' comments associated with Plaintiff's posts. Plaintiff's account became a public forum for speech by, to, and about government policy. Again, it's not a public forum, though. It's, it's a page on a private platform. If you want to nationalize Facebook or Twitter or whatever, that's fine. I'm not against that. If you want to nationalize these big tech companies, do it. But you can't have it both ways. You can't have it be a public company and want them to act as a government agency. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Here's where he's going to blame Democrats. Democrat legislators in Congress feared plaintiffs' skilled use of social media <laughs> as a threat to their own re-election efforts. These legislators exerted overt coercion using both words and actions upon defendants to have defendants censor their views and content with which members of Congress disagreed with of both the plaintiff and the punitive class members. Not only did Democrat legislators openly voice their displeasure with defendant for providing a platform to plaintiff and punitive members, but they also spoke publicly of steps they would take against defendant if defendants continued to provide a platform for the expression of views and content contrary to the legislators' own agendas. Oh, so do these legislators not have a freedom of speech? So you have a freedom of speech to post shit on Facebook, but they don't have freedom of speech to speak to the press about how they feel about your shitty shit posts on Facebook? Legislators, and in one instance Michelle Obama, the former first lady, made it increasingly clear they wanted plaintiff and punitive class members and their views and content they espoused to be banned from the dependent the pen sorry defendant's platform. Again, o Michelle Obama has a First Amendment right. She can say that if she wants. That's fine. The defendants shielded <clears throat> sorry. With defendants shielded from liability for engaging in censorship by Section 230, the Democratic legislators then wielded that immunity combined with threats to revoke that immunity or otherwise to regulate defendants to use defendants as a tool. That's so weird because the people I saw wanting to remove Section 230 were Trump and Republicans. That's so strange. Hmm. Are they changing the narrative on that? Because Trump openly was like, we need, to, we need to repeal Section 230, which was stupid anyway, because that would hurt him. <laughs> but whatever. Below are just some examples of Democrat legislators threatening new regulations, antitrust breakups, and removal of Section 230 immunity from defendants. And again, right-wingers are still talking about breaking up big tech companies, which I don't disagree with. But that's funny that they're making this a partisan thing. Uh, Nancy Pelosi in 2019 says, but I do think that for the privilege of 230, there has to be a bigger sense of responsibility on it, and it's not out of the question that it could be removed. Um, the idea that it's a tech company is that Section 230 should be revoked, immediately should be reworked, number one for Zuckerberg and other platforms, Joe Biden, and then this last one from uh, Mark Warner. We can and should have a conversation about 230 and the ways in which it has enabled platforms to turn a blind eye as their platforms are used to. Enable domestic terrorist groups to organize violence in plain sight. 
You get it. It goes on and on like this. Democrat legislators not only voiced their threats, e.g. new regulations and removing Section 230 immunity, to social media platforms, but also employed additional measures to deliver their unmistaken messages that they were preparing to act against social media platforms if defendants did not increase their censorship of uh, disfavored views and content of plaintiff and punitive class members. Hmm... These initial members included convening public hearings, issuing subpoenas, dragging in CEOs of the largest social media companies to testify publicly before Congress and subjecting those CEOs to lengthy, embarrassing questioning. <laughs> Some specific examples of these coercive measures were extended, blah, 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 more of this shit, you get it. So he's claiming that they were coerced into removing him and it wasn't their choice? All right, let's get to the actual stuff later on. This is just them stating what they think are coercive statements. Ah, here, this is where they're going to try and conflate uh, Facebook as being a government actor, even though they're not... Defendants' willful participation in joint activity with federal actors to center plaint censor plaintiff and the punitive class members. <clears throat> The CDC has publicly stated that it works with social media partners, including Facebook, to curb the spread of vaccine misinformation. In a document dated October 11th, 2019, the CDC expressly stated that it was engaging partners to contain the spread of vaccine misinformation and specifically states that the CDC would work with social media companies to that end. Facebook is among the social media partners referred to by the CDC. Defendants work directly and in concert with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and Dr. Anthony Fauci, Director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, to advance only the narrative that the defendants and Dr. Fauci subscribe to, according to publicly available emails that recently came from the Freedom of Information Act. Are they seriously going to say here that it's a bad thing that Facebook took the CDC's lead on <laughs> information about a disease? I don't think the courts are going to like that one. Just putting it out there. Sorry, I'm still so smacky. I apologize. I know it's really bad. We're coming up on uh, three hours, 40 minutes here, so I'm just getting a little dry in the mouth. <clears throat> However, in an email chain from March 15th uh, through 17th, 2020, between defendant Zuckerberg and Dr. Anthony Fauci, it's clear that the CDC, a government agency, was more than engaging partners merely to contain the spread of vaccine misinformation. The following is a copy of the March 15th, 2020 email from that chain. Let's take a look. This is from Mark Zuckerberg to Fauci. Subject is thanks and ideas. Tony, I wanted to send a notice of thanks for your leadership and everything you're doing to make our country's response to this outbreak as effective as possible. I also wanted to share a few ideas of ways we could help you get your messages out, but I understand you're incredibly busy, so don't feel a need to reply unless this seems interesting. This isn't public yet, but we're building a coronavirus information hub that we're going to get uh, put at the top of Facebook for everyone. 200 plus million Americans, 2.5 billion people worldwide with two goals. One, make sure people can get authoritative information from reliable sources, and two, encourage people to pr practice social distancing and give people ideas for doing this using internet tools. This will be live within the next 48 hours. As a central part of this hub, I think it would be useful to include a video from you because people trust and want to hear from experts rather than just a bunch of agencies and political leaders. This could be done in a number of formats if you're open to it. Probably best would be recording a Q&A where you answer people's top questions, but we'd be open to other formats too. I'm also doing a series of live stream Q&As with health experts to try and use my large following on the platform, 100 million followers, to get authoritative information out as well. I'd love to have you do one of these Q&As. This could be the video we put in the coronavirus hub, or it could be a different thing that we distribute separately. But I think it could be effective as well, finally, and then it's blanked out personal or irrelevant information. Again, I know you're incredibly busy, so don't feel the need to respond if this doesn't seem helpful. It's easy to talk live. Give me a call anytime on my mobile number. Blanked out, obviously. Thanks again for everything you're doing, uh, Mark. I, what, what, do they think this is supposed to be bad? It's not. <laughs> um, 
Citosaurus says, holy shit, you're still alive. Insanity. Have the rest of my bits. Thank you. And Tucker White says, so Trump just undermined his own lawsuit with that email. My God, he's so stupid. Yeah, I don't understand what he thinks this email is supposed to show. It's clearly them being strategic partners. It's Facebook as one of the largest c communication services in the world saying, you're the CDC, you're Fauci, you're an expert in the field. We want to, as someone who are experts in communication, try and work with you in order to get expert opinion out there. And I don't like Facebook. I don't like Mark Zuckerberg. But, like, this email is not evil. This is fine. This is good. <laughs> In response to Zuckerberg's email, National Institute of Health Communications Director Courtney Billet sent Dr. Fauci an email the next day, which read, Per email below, Mark Zuckerberg has extended a few offers to do videos with you that would be happy to seek clearance on for you to do, if you're amenable. These would have the weight and impact of television, really more so. Please advise if you want to do, uh, and we will seek clearance with the VP office and work with the party to sort out logistics. But in even bigger detail, a deal in his offer blank the sooner we get that offer up the food chain the better i gave bill hall a heads up about this opportunity and he is standing by to discuss this with hhs and white house comms but i didn't want him to do anything without you being aware of the offer is it okay if i hand this aspect off to bill to determine who the best point of contact would be so the administration can take advantage of this offer soonest uh do you plan to call mark zuckerberg his cell number is in the message below um, then this is from Fauci, he says, I'll write or call Mark and tell him I'm interested in doing this. I'll then tell him that you will get for him the name of the USG point of contact. I agree, it should be Bill Hall, who could then turf to the White House comms if he wishes. Interesting that they're also, like, seeking approval from, like, the White House and stuff on this, who Trump was in charge of at the time. Fauci says, thank you for your kind note. I tried to call you, but got voicemail. FYI, my cell phone number is blank. Your idea and proposal sound terrific. I'd be happy to do a video for your hub. We need to reach as many people as possible and convince them to take mitigating strategies seriously, or the NGS will get much, much worse. Also, your idea about blank is very exciting. I'm copying my special assistant, Patty Conrad. Her office number is blank. Please have your people contact her to arrange for this video. I'm also copying the director of my communications and government relations group. She can help put people in contact with the best person who could be the U.S. government point of contact. Best regards, Tony. Tucker White says, um, I bet it's the grayed out part. Scratch those off and get Fauci telling Zuckerberg to order 66 alt conservatives just for shits and giggles. <laughs> um... Uh, all redactions referred to in the above emails are noted B4, indicating that the purported legal basis for the redaction was commercial or financial information. In April of 2020, following the surreptitious emails between Dr. Fauci and IH Communications Director Billet and Defendant Zuckerberg, defendants would begin what became a concerted, massive, system-wide, and indeed worldwide program of monitoring COVID-19-related views and content and censor posts deemed false claims by Facebook. Their entire argument is... Wah! They seeked out the opinions of experts to make sure that people got accurate information about a health crisis. This is a bad argument even for Trump. Facebook's COVID and vaccine policy states Facebook does not allow false claims about the vaccines or vaccination programs, which public health experts have advised could lead to COVID-19 vaccine rejection and other false claims that could lead to negative outcomes. Facebook, COVID-19, and vaccine policy updates and protections. There's a link. Policy clarifies that what Facebook means by false is not actual or factual falsity, but rather whether the claim, claim contradicts or challenges the pronouncements or recommendations proposed by public health authorities, including the CDC. Because those are different things. A senior official in the Biden administration has stated that the White House has been involved in direct engagement with social media companies, specifically including Facebook, to remove so-called COVID vaccine misinformation, and Facebook has publicly confirmed that it assists the White House in achieving this objective. Donald, you were pre- Whatever. <laughs> so ridiculous. Facebook censorship of users who engage in speech with a different opinion. 
That's doing a lot of work in that sentence. Uh, regarding the COVID-19 vaccination, then Facebook advanced for Dr. Fauci and the CDC, irrespective of the credentials of those posting said differing opinions, was a closely coordinated interaction between defendants and a specific government actor, Dr. Fauci, and government agency to constrain free speech. Jesus. When Facebook states or implies that users who espouse a different narrative regarding the safety and efficacy of the vaccination are spreading false information, it's an act of bad faith. It's necessary in society for people to have a robust exchange of ideas, yet Zuckerberg and Facebook have worked closely with the government to silence any opposing views. If you told me, like in 2012, that the ex-president of the United States was going to sue Facebook and one of the main points of information in the lawsuit is that they're complaining that there isn't enough anti-vax info on Facebook. I'd probably believe you, but I'd be very disappointed. We're so fucked. Before, during, and after the 2020 presidential election, plaintiff's Facebook account was censored multiple times, as were the accounts of punitive class members for the views they expressed or content they shared on Facebook, for example. Donald Trump, posting on Facebook, says, The fake news is talking about cases, cases, cases. This includes many low-risk people. Media is doing everything possible to create fear prior to November 3rd. The cases are up because testing is way up. By far the most and the best in the world. Mortality rate is down 85% plus. And then Facebook just put a little thing underneath. It's like, hey, get, get accurate info here. Oh, we're probably gonna have to call it a night soon. My throat's killing me. <clears throat> uh, similar stuff. Basically, you know, he just got a bunch of stuff for misinformation. Another example of defendants working directly with government actors to censor free speech was when plaintiff and punitive class members supported the view that hydroxychloroquine might be an effective preventative option to protect against coronavirus. Oh no, they're still doing this? Really? Plaintiff and putative class members posted about hydroxychloroquine were censored by Facebook as only the narrative cra crafted by Dr. Fauci, <laughs> NIA, NIAID, and the CDC was allowed on Facebook regarding best practices for treating novel COVID-19. <laughs> then why didn't Trump take hydroxychloroquine when he got COVID? Gee, I wonder why. <sighs> Plaintiff's Facebook posts on January 6th, 2021 were used in his official capacity as President of the United States and served a public function in posting his robust political rhetoric. Robust political rhetoric is an interesting way to say I incited an insurrection attempt uh, addressed to those who had attended his rally that day. You, the attendees who then went to Congress and broke in and, and beat up cops and tried to <laughs> capture and kill Congress people. Ugh. The day after, Facebook at the personal direction of Zuckerberg center censored plaintiff's Facebook account, blocking his ability to communicate with his approximately 35 million followers. Why does it matter how many followers you had? And the ability of plaintiff's approximately 35 million followers to hear and comment on the videos or views and contents of the free speech he was expressing. So that's just when he gets banned. And then I think it goes on to other people who've been banned, etc. This is about the punitive class members. This is about Elizabeth Albert. Less interested in these people, but you get it. Same deal. They posted some misinformation shit, and they're mad that they got either banned or fact-checked or whatever. <clears throat> okay, this is where they claim where there's different counts of wrongdoing. I really want to get through this before I end the stream. So we're gonna we're gonna power through, okay? Uh, count one, violation of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Plaintiff restates the allegations set forth in paragraphs 1 through 145. Pursuant to Section 230, defendants are encouraged and immunized by Congress to censor constitutionally protected speech on the Internet, including by and among its approximately 3 billion users that are citizens of the United States. 
Using its authority under Section 230 to gather in concert with other social media companies, the defendants regulate the content of speech over a vast swath of the internet. Defendants are vulnerable to and react to coercive pressure from the federal government to regulate specific speech. In censoring the specific speech at issue in this lawsuit and deplatforming plaintiff defendants were acting in concert with federal officials, including officials at the CDC and the Biden transition team. As such, defendant censorship activities amount to state action. No, they don't. Facebook is not a state actor just because you don't like them and that because sometimes they talk to government officials. Uh, Nick says, I can't wait for Leonard French to cover it. Oh yeah, me too. Leonard French is great. Defendant censoring of the plaintiff's Facebook account, as well as those punitive class members, violates the First Amendment of the United States Constitution because it eliminates the plaintiff and class members' participation in a public forum. It's not a public forum! And the right to communicate to others their content and point of view. <coughs> it's literally a private platform. Defendant censoring of the plaintiff and punitive class members from their Facebook accounts violates the First Amendment because it imposes viewpoints and content-based restrictions on the plaintiff and punitive class members' access to information, views, and content otherwise available to the general public. <sighs> Defendant censoring of plaintiff and punitive class members violates the First Amendment because it imposes prior restraint on free speech and has a chilling effect on the social media users and non-users alike. Defendant's blocking of the individual and class plaintiffs from their Facebook accounts violates the First Amendment because it imposes a viewpoint and content-based restriction on the plaintiff and punitive class members' ability to petition the government for redress of grievances. Defendant's censorship of the plaintiff and punitive class members from their Facebook accounts violates the First Amendment because it imposes a viewpoint and content-based restriction on their ability to speak and the public's right to hear and respond. Defendants blocking the plaintiff and punitive class members from their Facebook accounts violates the First Amendment right to free speech. No, it doesn't. Facebook isn't the government, and they don't become it just because they talked to Fauci once. Hydrate. I need to drink, like, a whole gallon of water after this. Whew. Defendant censoring of plaintiff by banning plaintiff from his Facebook account while exercising his free speech as the President of the United States was an egregious violation of the First Amendment. I don't like that this is separate. It makes it sound like the President has more right to speech than anyone else. I don't like that. Uh, defendant Zuckerberg is sued in his personal capacity and is liable in damages because he was personally responsible for Facebook's unconstitutional censorship of plaintiff and the punitive class members, including Facebook's deplatforming of plaintiff and other punitive class members. Zuckerberg is also sued in his official capacity, along with Facebook itself, for injunctive relief and to the unconstitutional censorship of the plaintiff and punitive class members, including Facebook's deplatforming of plaintiff and other punitive class members. <sighs> Again, they're talking about 230 and saying they think 230 is unconstitutional. They're, this is just them talking about what makes up the class and why the class can be considered a class. Tucker White says, okay, I've had enough, and they post a link. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Jesus Christ, man, what the hell is wrong with you? Please, just shut up! <laughs> We're almost done, I promise. I'm sorry. Okay, demand for jury trial. Plaintiff in the class demanded trial by jury on all issues, so triable. Prayer for relief. This is, this is, this is what they think should happen if they win the case. Wherefore, plaintiff Donald J. Trump in the class respectfully request that the court enter an order certifying this case as a class action, appointing plaintiff as a class representative, and appointing plaintiff's counsel as lead class counsel that the court order uh, a, ju a judge and decree in favor of plaintiff and the class action defendants for an award of compensatory and punitive damages to the plaintiff and the class in the amount to be determined at trial. So basically they want money, they want Zuckerberg and Facebook to pay Trump, the other defendants, and the class action uh, class for this shit. 
uh, B, an injunctive and declaratory judgment ordering Facebook to immediately reinstate plaintiff and putative class members to their Facebook accounts so they have to reactivate Trump's Facebook and everyone else's who's a member of this lawsuit. An injunctive and declaratory judgment ordering Facebook to remove its warning labels and misclassifications on all content the plaintiff and the class and to desist from any further warnings or classifications. Basically, they don't want to be fact-checked. You know that classic First Amendment right to not be fact-checked. <laughs> An injunction and declaratory judgment ordering Facebook to remove its warning label. Oh, read that one. Um, a judgment declaring Sections 230 and the Communications Decency Act unconstitutional. An award of attorney's fees and cost to plaintiff and the class in amount to be determined. An award of punitive damages to plaintiff and class in an amount to be determined. An award of such other and further relief as the court may um, deem just and proper. So basically this is typical. It's just, hey, if the court wants to give us anything else, we'll take it. <laughs> And this is just, you know, the people who filed the lawsuit. Tucker White says, The best part of all this is no matter the outcome, someone, uh, someone everyone universally despises gets to eat shit, be it Trump or Facebook, Twitter. True. How is this not thrown out? It might be. This one in particular probably will be because they filed it in the Miami courts in Florida. And I guess Facebook has a thing in their TOS that if you're going to sue them, you have to sue them in a specific venue, which is not the Miami courts. Um, so, I don't know. It's um, it's interesting. Um, I, I Again, I'm not a lawyer. I've never claimed to be. I don't have any legal knowledge or expertise. But on the face of it, it feels like Donald Trump and his lawyers trying to claim that Facebook is a government entity because they were in communication with Fauci about... COVID-19 stuff seems weak. <laughs> it seems to fall completely on its face. Um, by that standard, any company big enough could be considered a government actor. Trump's own company, I'm sure, has coordinated with governments at one point or another, which would then, by the same note, make them government entities. The precedent would be quite interesting. <laughs> but I don't think... I, I, I think it'll be thrown out. This one will probably be thrown out. They might try and refile in the correct venue. Um, and that one will probably be thrown out for other reasons. If this does actually go to trial, it would be hilarious. But yeah. Hydrate. Okay. Yeah, it, I think it's pandering too. I think this lawsuit is more about him getting to say to his audience at his rallies, and that's why I'm suing Facebook and Twitter, and they all go, yay, than it is about him actually getting anything done, but who knows. All right, we made it through. Good job, everyone. High fives all around. Uh, my voice is probably going to be completely gone tomorrow. I hope not, <laughs> but my throat is killing me. So who do we raid? Who do we raid? Who do we raid? Who do we raid? This guy still doesn't oh, let me the raid time him, is struggling right? Crack Which annoys me. I think this guy doesn't allow raids. If if I can't raid this guy, I'll raid Demon Mama since someone asked. Yeah, see, it didn't do anything, right? Yeah, can't read this channel. Okay, we're doing Demon Mama. Yeah, that's Hal Sparks. He's a, a political commentator now. I mean, he also he's a comedian still, but yeah. He does this shit, which is funny. I used to watch I Love the 80s and the 70s and stuff, and I never thought I'd have the same job as that guy. But here we are. Life is weird. All right, have a good night, everyone. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll be doing some other stream. I don't know what I'll be doing, but I'm sure it'll be fun. So come hang out. Um, probably around 4, maybe 5. 
Probably four tomorrow. I think I have stuff to do later in the day. So yeah, later. Have a good night. You're all valid. Joining Discord. Oh, read oh the okay. Rules. I was gonna say.